So after the goat incident, I haven't been allowed within 30 feet of it, Domino's Pizza at all. So, hey guys, we're live. How you guys all doing? Beastly. Long time no see. How you been? Oh, it's all good on this side. Damn, man. The goat incident, that was, that was some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, well, hey. <laughs> you win some, you yeah, lose some, Beastly. I heard you were uh, visiting family last week. We missed you. Yeah, I uh, watched the show. I actually was watching the show uh, from Ohio to Georgia, and it took about eight hours for me to get the entire show because I was going through such bad spots with my service that I just like, wait and wait and wait and then go back to music and then come back when I got all my 4G LTE back. Yeah. Uh, you guys had an awesome show, man. I wish I could have been here, but, yeah, I was with family, and I uh, got to see some old friends, and uh, Kay got to hang out with her sister and her dad. It was worthwhile, man. But I'm back now. Let's get it, baby. That's great. Hey, 9 to 5 Gamers, what have you been up to this week? I saw your, uh, uh, I already forgot, Fez, Fez walkthrough. I only watched yeah. the first episode, but I'm enthralled already. How's that going? Yeah, that game's crazy. It's a real kind of chill, more calm puzzle game. I just figured I'd do a walkthrough of that because there's so much Infamous up right now. I was like, I'm not doing any more Infamous, man. Yeah. <laughs> I always awesome feel like, game, I have, but... I, like I'm obligated. If I start a Let's Play, I feel like I'm obligated to finish it. Yeah, yeah, I feel you on that one. I was never really like doing a Let's Play for Infamous. I just yeah. figure I use like certain cuts to use for different videos. Yeah, that's a good idea. Marco, how you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> what have you been doing on Unreal Gamer over there? Uh, well, I'm starting. I just started playing Minecraft. I played it a couple days ago. Say what you will. <laughs> I enjoyed playing it for now. I've played some uh, Duke Nukem and finished off some, uh, what's it called, Don't Starve. And, you know, I can't remember the videos I put up a couple days ago. Uh, oh, yeah, Once Call of Duty. Done, they're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shooting them out. I'm just like... You know. Unlike George Lucas, you get it right the first time. <laughs> Not too nerdy. How you been? What have you been up to this week? Doing well, man. You know, just letting you know, Marco, by the way, Minecraft won't be on the Facebook Rift. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did a lot of Infamous Second Son. You know, I pretty much played that game like crazy, beat it, finally got uh, platinum, and also did a little parody video if you guys Yeah, I liked that. I saw that video. I really liked it. I thought it was really <laughs> funny, especially that last little scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something different, you know, just having fun with it, stuff like that. So... That's pretty much it for me. All right, Connie, been a long time. How you been? All right, I'm a bit stressed, though, because I couldn't get this freaking thing to work, but not work. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The wonderful world of computers oh, and no. internet. <laughs> what have you been up to on YouTube this week? Um, I've been uploading The Walking Dead things, because I'm trying to catch up to everyone else, but I've decided yeah. that I'm just going to do a speed through, because it's quicker when you're not recording your own Let's Play, and then just record season two. Mm -hmm. And maybe record me watch the last episode because apparently that's really sad, but I don't know what happens. Are you so, making sorry. all your decisions based on how you would make them, or are you trying for like a specific way to I'm, play through? I'm doing it as I probably would. Like I don't trust anyone. Like nope. I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just trying to do it how I would do it. See mm -hmm. if I survive so as a zombie. You got some trust issues over there, huh? <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, you know, I ain't getting killed. No, uh, Connie, I saw you You uploaded some uh, PS4 footage. You got a PS4 now? Yeah, I got one the day Ground Zeroes came out. So, like, I was really worried it wasn't going to come in time, and then it did. And, yeah, now it's just collecting dust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what did you get with it? Just the Ground Zeroes? Just Ground Zeroes, yeah. That's the only reason why I bought the PS4, to be completely honest with you, just because I wanted to get Ground Zeroes. And well, obviously let, let me thing. suggest you giving that infamous at least a shot. Pretty good game. I will when the price drops. Hmm. I'm a bit poor at the moment now. <laughs> <laughs> PS4, got you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, everybody's kind of spoke on what they've been up to all week. Right, Rabbit, what have you been doing for the last seven days? Well, I've been uh, continuing my Thief Let's Play, and I'll be honest with you, that's become kind of a grind. Uh, I, I want to be done with that game at this point. Uh, I'm getting fairly bored with it. <laughs> I was like, oh, towards the end, I'm like just sprinting through shit, like forget yeah. that. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of that too. Uh, so, like, I'm struggling. Like, I want to get the Let's Play finished because I've come so far. I've got like 30 episodes. So it, it seemed like a shame to just like drop it. But I just have no interest in playing that game anymore, which makes it harder to, you know, continue the Let's Play. So I've also been doing some uh, a lot of Titanfall. 
I actually got the little book there. But I have been absolutely loving that game. I just got the uh, achievement for uh, getting your first prestige in March. I realized that that was an achievement that was going to be uh, never available again, so I figured, oh, I want one of those. That'd be fun. And then I found out there's no points for it, so, eh. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else have I been doing? Uh, oh, some Infamous stuff. I've been mostly live streaming Infamous and then just uh, pushing, like, hour-long videos over to the YouTube channel, so you expect to see more of that, but I'm not going to do a Let's Play of that because I'm just having fun playing it on Twitch. And that's about it. Awesome. Yeah, as soon as I came back, I, I fired up that infamous. I wanted I wanted my first PS4 AAA exclusive, and uh, I don't think it disappointed really at all. Uh, I did find a few issues with the game. It had a little a few glitches where I got stuck inside of buildings and stuff. But the the, the, the feeling of that game, though, the actual feeling of uh, power and the immersion of the world, man, it was really a nice experience. I beat it yesterday. Uh, Kate beat it the day before yesterday, and uh, she's actually playing it right now because she's a maniac. But uh, <laughs> she's trying to go get platinum and, uh, you know, finish everything 100%, and so I know she will. She has more patience in that arena than I do. So most of you guys have played this game far further than I have, and what I'm worried about is it's an open-world game, and I'm always worried when I play an open world game, is there going to be enough to do? Is it going to be, like, am I going to play this game for eight hours and just be repeating the same missions over and over? Is it, you know, is there a lot of variety, or by the end are you ready to just, like, be done with it? Well, what, what I would say is it does have a lot of repetitious parts of the game. Uh, a lot of the things you're going to be doing from start to finish are going to be mirroring themselves. Um, but, but the fun, the overall fun of the game it outweighs that repetition uh, by far, if you ask me. The, the, the abilities you get in the game, the uh, how wide open the game is, and the, the beauty of it, the beauty of the world. It is a by gorgeous time, game. By the time you get done playing it, and, and toward the end you get your last power, like you get it for like five minutes, right, <laughs> right before the end of the game. Uh, when you get to really experiment with these powers and level them up, and then you get to see what they really can, what they're capable of, I think it it kind of outweighs the, the length of the game. Uh, after you beat the game, you get to go on side mission after side mission, which is very repetitive, in my opinion. But overall, I really really enjoyed the game. I'll be doing a review on it um, probably tonight, if not tomorrow for sure. Not too nerdy. You had something you want to pop in there? Yeah. Um, the see, the thing is, like, I feel that. Games like this, open world games, MMOs, RPG style, like this is open world, like they're all pretty much repetitive, but like what makes it different like for this game is the special abilities like uh, Beastly Gamer said, it's each time you get a different power, each time you're leveling up your power, you do different movesets, stuff like that. So now you might have some, a mission that's similar to what you just did beforehand, except now you get to do it a different way because you have a new ability to beat it. And that's the thing, like... Um, I learned that before, the smoke power, I hated smoke power in a bad playthrough. Then when I played a game again in good playthrough, I found out smoke power was one of the best for the good playthrough because it's easy not to hurt people in that sense. You just smoke them, they get stunned, and then you can not hurt them. So, like, it gives you a different way to play things, and if you look at someone else's playthrough, it will be different from someone else's. And I think that's what makes this game different is that, like, each each time you play, it's something new that goes on. And... um. The fact that it's open world, I think that it makes it easier for them to add DLC or add separate missions later on. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that, to see what they do with it. It's kind of like, uh, you remember how Crisis was when it first came out? Uh, how you're able to tackle missions from high or low or going guns blazing or you yeah. know, be stealthy. You really can with this game. Um, there's one ability uh, in video where you go invisible. There's just so much stuff you can do, man. And then the enemies aren't stupid by a long shot. The enemies, there's so many types of enemies, and the, the animation of the enemies is like blowing my mind, watching these guys walk in the street with spirals of rocks around them, and it's, <laughs> it, it blew my mind just uh, seeing what the PS4 was you know, really capable of doing this early on. But uh, yeah, you can tackle these missions in so many ways, and there's really no way to do something the same twice. It's going to be different every time. I really right like the game. Gecko, I was impressed with the graphics, that, uh, that kind of seaside town with the lodge and the the warehouse, and like traversing the kind of the shoreline just to get from one place to the other, it was unbelievable looking. It was really, really brilliant. Yeah, it, it looked nice. I mean, the one, there's two things that I might say that they could have fixed. One is kind of stupid, the water thing. I 
I love how he has all these special powers, but if he lands in water, they reach something back on that. that, that they need to fix that. Two, he can't swim. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the second thing is that uh, the camera. The camera at times will get in your way. Like, you have to rotate a camera a certain way while you're in the air. I understand it's hard to do that in an open world game, but I felt like the camera could have been worked a little bit better because sometimes you would not have visibility in what you're doing, and that will get you killed more than the actual complexity of the game. So yeah. I, I think that something they could have worked on. But besides that, it's hard to complain about the game itself. Like it seriously deserves to be AAA t- title for the PlayStation Four. I think for the first time for Infamous too. I would always con- consider the first two Infamous games kind of like a just slightly below AAA, like almost like a B tier title. But I think this one really kind of captured everybody's imagination. Everybody seems to be really glowing about it in kind of a neon type of way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like a real yeah. step up for this developer, though. Yeah, I think because the first game, or the first two games, uh, it was the character Cole. A lot of people liked the character Cole, and that's what made the game his powers, his abilities. But, like, a lot of people didn't like Delson. They didn't relate to him as much. But the gameplay itself was so strong, the way they got the powers, the way things happened. And towards the end of the story, you started to like him as well. And that, that's the thing that, that made this game different. It wasn't the character itself, like, you learn to like the character later. It was just the gameplay around it that actually did really well. Is that because you just, like, you just sort of get used to the character, or is that because there's actual, like, character development? It, I guess it's a little bit of development you see, like, depends what story you take, you know, which one you choose, a good side or a bad side, but, you know, begin the game, he's a little cocky attitude. A lot of people don't like that cocky attitude. You seem like a little too cocky, and it, it just didn't sit well. Like, Cole was different. Cole, like, people fell for him right away as a character, you know? But well, this Cole, kid, Cole was a little bit darker as well, yeah. right? Yeah. He, he, he lacked that spark of personality. Uh, Delson, he's more like a, a, a young teenager mm-hmm. talking crap to people, you know, and, and I kind of, it resonated more with me, Delson over Cole, because that's kind of the way I would have reacted. If all of a sudden I touched somebody and I could do mm-hmm. this amazing crap, yeah. jump over in the air, I'd be smiling up at the sky too, about to wear people out. So he, be, to me, he he became uh, a very likable anti-hero. Now, Briar Rabbit, I know when you first started playing this game and you were talking about it, uh, him as a character, it didn't really sit well with you. Is it still the same way? Has that changed at all? I'm just curious. Yeah, he, he's kind of that kind of cocky, like uh, teenager attitude, like that immature attitude that he has at the beginning of the game. It was wearing on me. I saw what they were going with, though. Like it wasn't disrupting my enjoyment of the game. Uh, and I did really enjoy how he just like he embraced the fact that he has superpowers now. Like he wasn't all somber and like, oh, why is this happening to me? I just want to be normal. He's like, no, man, I got freaking superpowers and this is goddamn awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like they, that. <laughs> they did it on purpose so you could purposely dislike him in the beginning, but then like sort of root for him at the end, you know. And like I said, it depends which side he chose. Good karma, bad karma. Two different things happen at the end of the story. So yeah. Two very different What did everyone choose? Go ahead, Kenny. What did everyone choose? Did you all go for good or bad? I did good in the beginning, and now I'm playing it my second time through to platinum, and I'm bad. I did bad first, and then after I got to platinum, I did good the second time. Or I did good the second time to get platinum, I mean, so. Well, I, I started out as good, and that's the only way I played it. I beat the game yesterday. And my wife, she played it as bad. She beat it the day before yesterday. So I didn't have to play it twice. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> so, not too dirty, you mentioned it earlier. You are talking about the Facebook rift. What do you think about this news? Uh, well, I made a video about it, like, that I said it should be illegal. But, you know, obviously it's not illegal. I didn't think it's really illegal. I just said that, you know, to uh, because I feel there's something that they did that was wrong. There's a lot of people that supported Doculus Rift. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they. I think that part of it alone is the wrong part because they had a Kickstarter. They never would have got that Kickstarter if people, if they announced that they were planning to go with some, a bigger company or like Facebook or something. Because face, when you think of Facebook, it's not, I don't think they're going to do a bad job. In fact, I think they'll do a really good job with the VR mask. But when you're talking about as a gaming accessory, I don't think they're, that's going to be their number one priority. I don't think they're going to be paying attention to the hardcore game. Are they going to add games to it? Yes, but it's not going to no longer be that hardcore game in virtual reality mask. 
And like to be honest with you, I'm waiting for my headset. It's supposed to come in Friday. Didn't come in yet, so I'm assuming it's gonna come in uh, Monday, which is the the Dev Kit two for the Oculus Rift. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna open it up. And I'm probably gonna ship it back. Like I honestly do not want to be involved with that. I know how Facebook works. Wow. Like it's that serious. I know how Facebook works, and Facebook, whether they incorporate their name inside of it or whatever, whether they make you log into it or not. You know, they're still going to use all the information they get from what you're watching to advertise. That's how they make their money. There's no way you're going to tell me a company is going to pay $2 billion and not have some sort of plan to make money later. Absolutely. Now, I, I could be wrong that they could just sit there and let Oculus Rift do its job, but that's a huge risk for a company, especially a company where Facebook has to deal with a bunch of different investors. There's no way they're going to sit there and let Facebook not jump in and help and do something. So. Why do you think Facebook did this? Do you think it, they want to like create like kind of a like a gaming community inside Facebook more so than what they already have with like the free to play games and those like Facebook games? Do you think they want to be like a hub for gamers where you know people are coming to Facebook to log into their Facebook account and start their game session similar to Steam or similar to Xbox Live? Or do you think that they're just trying to branch out, kind of trying different things? Or maybe Mark Zuckerberg just has a hard on for this thing. <laughs> uh, I think Mark Z- Zuckerberg does have a hard on for this thing. But the the thing is, um, if you look at what he said, he said he plans that this will be a great social device, and he said that, and that's quote, like he actually said that. Yeah. So if you look at Facebook, their demographic that they're lacking in is between ages twenty one and thirty. That's yeah. around the gaming. The division. That's what the, a lot of the hardcore gamers are between 21 and 35. So what they're planning to do is attract people, not just the gamers. They they also want to attract other people. So imagine if you wear a headset or something, virtual reality, and you could socialize with your friends on Facebook. No longer do you have to log on to Facebook. You can actually use a virtual reality mask to talk to each other or something like that. I think that's their ultimate goal, to make a social network using virtual reality. As much as they don't want to say that, I think that's their ultimate goal. It's, I, that's what I honestly think they're going to do with it eventually. We'll have a Facebook I, 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 post that says, Not Too Nerdy is currently playing Farmville with his VR headset on. <laughs> I can just see Zuckerberg now just petting an evil cat saying with, uh, with the ripped, we will take over the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, just think about how much money, uh, you know Facebook makes money for advertisers, right? So just think about how much money they will make if you tell an advertiser or a company, say, hey, you can advertise on a virtual reality mask and people could see your image in 3D. People could see your advertisement in three-dimensional. So they actually could feel the advertisement. They could see it, and it, it, they'll make them buy it more. Imagine this. You can walk around in a 3D space of a restaurant before you go or go to a, you know, a sporting event or you know, see a place before you actually – they're going to make tons of money off of this ad shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I believe that the actual video game aspect of the, the Oculus Rift is getting ready to be pushed all the way to the back burner. That's me personally. But who's going to buy it if it's not video gamers, right? you got to sell it to the video gamers because nobody, nobody's going to want to walk around Facebook in virtual reality. You know, like, what are they going to do? Have something like, uh, what was that, PlayStation Home? Like, is that what they're going to do? Because that what, sucked. Well, or what, what was the what, other one? What he was saying is they could use it for, like, educational applications, you know, uh, seeing how things work in hospitals, Sporting events, things of that nature, and that's not necessarily gamers, but, um, but that's what nobody's going to buy for. it for. That are they? Like, are you, I can see maybe hospitals buying it to teach to teach stuff, but I mean that's a that's a small group well, of people that would be buying see, it. The fact is, Facebook makes so much money with advertisements now that they could take. They're one of those companies that could sell it for a loss. So yeah. they could sell it to the people for a loss and then make their money back in advertisements. That, yeah. That's the thing you have to watch out for because there's not only like Facebook is free, so people, they get money like that. They can literally sell these for, at a loss, still make profit because you know people are going to buy it and they'll just make the profit off the advertisements later. That's the thing. Like There's a lot of things Facebook can do, and I know that he definitely saw that, and their, his investors saw that, and that's what counts. It doesn't matter how much... Mark Zuckerberg likes something. Eventually, he has to face the investors too. Now, it's no longer his own thing anymore. This or, Titanfall murder was brought to you by Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> or, or think about this though: like, how much hand sanitizer do we buy every year as individuals? Probably not very much. But companies like Gojo, they make hand sanitizer. They sell it to every every hospital in the country. They make billions of dollars every year, right? 
if Facebook were able to uh, capitalize on education and get these uh, these rifts into every school somehow, get them into hospitals for educational purposes <laughs> with t uh, with our doctors, they'd make all their money back and then some, and, and then be able to, to reach out to the peons who want the Oculus Rift Facebook version still. So, I mean, they're, obviously they bought it for a reason. They know they're going to make a ton of money off of it. I personally think it's going to be because of ad revenue, but there's a lot of options for them outside of gaming, and he said it himself. They, they want to use it as education and for communication purposes, and that's probably where they're going to go. They're going to go for schools, they're going to go for hospitals, and they're going to go for that aspect of it. If this thing turns into, uh, you know, another, what is it called, home for PlayStation? I can't remember yeah. what that thing's called. We know it's home. Or, or Second Life. You we know, all, we all hang out at home. Yeah, that's how we all met. Second Life, you know, if it turns into something like that where there's just a bunch of flying dicks around in 3D, I really, I'm not playing that game. Like, I don't want to see it. <laughs> like, I, if, if this, what my hope is for 3D is I think all gamers hope is I want to be immersed into a world and not even realize I'm playing a game anymore, you know, like that good. But... I don't. I don't understand what the application can be for Facebook. I don't. Like, I, yeah, sure, they can sell advertisements, but somebody's got to actually put this thing on for a reason. They're not going to put it on just to see advertisements. And I, I don't see. I don't see that. I, I don't see that application for Facebook. It's bizarre to me. I think because Facebook bought them, you're not going to see uh, any PC gamers necessarily backing them. Like, no one's going to buy that fucking thing because Facebook has control now. They're going to ruin it, man, for what it is. They're going to put that thing on the shelf, have a Facebook emblem on it, and everybody's moms and grandmas are going to go buy it because they want to do whatever on Facebook. What if it all just blows over, though? What if what if it really is Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's like pet project? Like, hey, I really like this thing. I want it to succeed. I want to throw him $200 million. We'll see the returns in 10 years because this thing is going to be super successful, and, and we're just going to leave them alone. They've done that before with certain apps that they've bought. It's like they've bought apps that they've said, yeah, this was really cool. We know it's going to make money. We're not going to interfere with it or suck it into the Facebook fold. We're just going to let them be. You know, they've done that in the past with much smaller purchases, though. Well, the one reason why I don't think that's possible is because this thing has been, you know, it, it didn't happen overnight. As much people want to say this happened out of nowhere, like there were signs of it before. One of the top investors for the Oculus Rift after Kickstarter was a shareholder of Facebook. He owns most of the shares, like a lot of the shares next to Mark Zuckerberg, and he like was a one of the biggest donators to Oculus Rift. So he was one of the shareholders to Oculus Rift. That's why people speculated, but then no one really thought Facebook could get it, but then Mark Zuckerberg got it the next time the next day out. So like this was already planned ahead. If their shareholders for Facebook are already looking into this device, you have to believe that they want to make money off of it. Yeah. it I mean they have time to wait because it's Facebook, but at the same time Two billion dollars is still a, a decent amount to invest, and their investors eventually want. You know, I mean, two billion for us it seems like a lot, but for Facebook, that's probably maybe five percent or ten percent of their their whole uh, gross. You know, their whole net worth. So it's really not that much to them, but for us, that just seems like they're gonna do something. They have to make a move. So I don't know. Hopefully no, I'm wrong. Once they add smell vision it's going to be like I'm actually there eating your dinner with you for those. <laughs> <laughs> now, I heard that uh, some of the original backers of the Kickstarter, uh, they actually have come out and they want their refunds. Did you hear anything about this, Nacho Nerdy? Yeah, they want the refunds. The problem is that um, Oculus Rift is going with, uh, they promised the dev kit one to them. They never promised them the full final version. That's what someone said. So that's why, like, they already have the development kit, the first development kit, and that's it. That's what you so, get. That's so what they're trying to say. That they kind of save their ass in the long run. Yeah, so that's why the fact that they, they release prototypes before they release the main product is what saved them. They could just say, oh, well, we already released you something. We promised you the first part. We never promised you the second one. So that's, now, that's it. That's all I was saying. Okay, uh, let me ask you a question, Brian Rabbit. I know that uh, the Oculus Rift was something that you were at least – Mulling over in your mind is something you you were you were going to potentially buy in the future. Does mm -hmm. this Facebook merger at all change that outlook for you? It does. I'm definitely scared of Facebook. I, I don't have the aversion to it that you do. I saw your video about Facebook. Uh, you know, I still use it. I use it for not only for marketing the 
the Briar Rabbit channel, but I also use it to keep in touch with basically high school friends that I don't see anymore. Uh, I don't use it a lot, though, and I, I, I got to say, I don't really like using surface, uh, services where I'm the product, where the, stuff like Google, stuff like Facebook, where it's not they're not selling me a service. I'm not paying for this service, and that tells me that I am the product. They're they're selling me. They're selling my information. They're selling me to advertisers. You know, Google does this. Facebook does this. Twitter does this. Everybody does it. Uh, anytime you get into a situation like that, that's that's what you got to know. That's that's the deal, basically. And uh, that scares me because I, I don't know how much control I want Facebook to have over my life or my information and how much more control do they have once I'm in their virtual reality world and like I'm I'm buying stuff and interacting with their VR. I don't even know what I'm going to be doing with this thing at this point. It'll be just like Facebook but your eyes can be the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> like would anybody buy that? Like I I can't imagine anybody just like browsing face like paying $300 for a headset and browsing Facebook for that. Like you can do Candy Crush. You can play Candy Crush. I yeah. can't wait to do that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking <laughs> a lot about all, all the... Wait, what if Valve partnered with them? Would you guys consider it? If who? Who partnered Valve. with them? Valve. Oh, Valve. hell yeah! Come on. I mean, See? if Valve... Valve will Valve. never partner with Facebook. It's... No, no, no. I'm not talking about Valve and Facebook. I'm talking yeah. about Oculus and... Oh, yeah, Valve. Oculus and Valve. Yeah. No, I'm talking about Facebook and Oculus. <laughs> would you buy it? Because uh, an, an ex-Valve employee, a developer, he's now developing for the Oculus. He's the chief oh. scientist. His name is, we've got right here, Michael Abrush. So he's, he's a top developer for, uh, he was, for Valve. Now he comes and works on here with that, like, because that's the only thing that's weighing it, like, kind of equally now. Valve only uh, makes polished games. Their games are amazing, so what makes you think that they wouldn't put out like a Portal 3 for it? Only the Oculus would get Portal well, 3. Would people buy it? First of all, that guy that you're talking about was, uh, he used to be John Carmack. That's the only reason why he went. He, like, he was made, like, he's another version of Carmack. So to be honest with you, like, his loss of Valve wasn't like a huge thing and going to Oculus, they already have Carmack. He has like almost identical ideas. He's pretty much, like, they were working together for years, him and Carmack. So, like, Carmack is the brains of the operation. He's already on Oculus, so, like, I don't know. Like, they have good people there. I'm not saying that. It's still the the Facebook name that I think is giving everyone a bad taste. Like I it's said, I creepy, right? Wrong. It's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> don't you feel that, like, everyone's mad about uh, the whole microtransactions and all that? Do you, don't you feel that Facebook is just going to run with that if they, once they oh, get a yeah, hold of this absolutely. thing? Absolutely. That's, sure. what, that's what's going to be all their games. They'll bleed you dry, brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Facebook has always been free, right? But now, for the first time, they might have a product that you pay for, and then you're still going to get advertisements on it. That's what my fear is, that that's yeah. never been done before, where you actually have to pay something, you still have advertisements. You know, to me, that's scary. Uh, that, that happens all the time. Cable TV still has advertisements on it. I pay for it. Video games have advertisements in them. I pay $60, and they have... They have Pizza Huts, you know, and Taco Bells in them. Or, or Burger King getting inside the ring and wrestling, right? Uh, I actually had Sneak King. You ever check that game out? That was such a creepy game if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> He's a creepy character. Like, <laughs> it's so awesome, though. <laughs> if, if I woke up and that guy was in my bedroom, I swear to God, either I'd get up and kill him or I'd have a heart attack before I could leave. <laughs> either one. You know what's a big game changer for the uh, Facebook Oculus is that Minecraft's not going to be supported on there. We're not said Facebook creeps me out. That's yeah. going to be a huge game changer because they, they sold alone 10 million copies just for the 360. Now you could probably triple that for the uh, PC. So, you know, you got 30 million potential buyers, and now they're all gone because he's not going to develop for it. Well, look, right here on the Beastly Thoughts show, I like to uh, propose a new name for the Oculus Rift, guys. And I'm thinking... Foculus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what I was going to say is, uh, see, the thing is, if you look at the other hand of it, because you're saying that Minecraft developer is gone, he's not going to be with them anymore. Um, the thing is this, like, that really doesn't make a difference, people, because Minecraft is iffy, if it'll look good at virtual reality anyway, but... If he went with another company, like say if he says, like, I'm not going with you guys, because people pretty much call him out and said he's acting like a baby for this. So if he went with, like, 
Project Morpheus instead and said, I'm going to make Minecraft for the PlayStation, then what? See, that, that could be something that people would be like, oh, like if developers start going with the PlayStation 4 just in spite of the Oculus Rift. I think, I think a lot of them are going to do that anyway, though. I mean, look at the, think, think of the, 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 the connotations that come with Facebook. Uh, I mean, I'm not the only guy out there who just feels iffy about Facebook as, as a company and as a service. And a lot of these guys, myself included, was looking forward to the Oculus Rift. Now I'm looking totally toward Project Mor- Morpheus as the, the predominant and the premium in the virtual reality headset space now because with Facebook backing this, of course, I think the hardware is going to be spectacular. I mean, they have a blank check. They can do the things now with the Oculus Rift that they wish they could have done six months ago, but they knew it was outside of their reach because they didn't have the backings or the funds. Now they have the money, but they don't have the same ideals behind the product. So I'm thinking that... They don't have any customers. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just shocked that Google didn't get get it. That's what I was shocked about. That wasn't Google that made the move. Yeah, or Microsoft. They could have called it the Google Double Eyeglass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess uh, Microsoft did announce that they are working on a VR headset. They might yeah. have just started that. <laughs> like, oh. This feels like so different. Might. This feels so different to me than the 3D, you know, the 3D era, where people were buying 3D TVs and everything. The 3D was the next, you know, uh, move for the future. The evolution of everything was 3D. That just seemed so much like a gimmick, even when it was going on big. Uh, this right here seems like it's really going to push us forward into a, a space that I think will be beneficial to all gamers because since the time we were kids, even back in the days of Doom, if we could have played a game like that in VR, you know, tech, it would have been mind-boggling. Absolutely. Now we're actually, now we're going, look, I mean, Project Morpheus, they had a demo of Thief. Thief, the game just came out on PS4, PS3, Xbox One, and Xbox 360. I mean, imagine that. They, they're able to create Virtual reality type worlds with these type of graphics, this is the future of what we've always wanted. I think it's going to last. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I hope so. Should we move on? Yeah, it's good. All right, we got we got some people with uh, Maker Studios uh, sponsorships on this or or deals. You got you guys hear they got bought by Disney? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> what do you guys all think about this? Well, we know what Beasley thinks, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, I guess guys, I'm becoming a hater. It's like I, I'm so against – I'm anti-establishment so much. I guess you guys can tell that. Disney, to me, is like an evil empire because of the, the shysty dealings that have been going on in that company for so long. And now I feel like I'm a part of it. Fuck it. Hail Satan. <laughs> Bullshit. What do you think that Disney wants with a YouTube partner partner network, though? Like, what? Why would they do that? For a good amount of money, five hundred million dollars they paid for it. Money. Wow. They want more money. How, how do they get it? How do well, they? There's a couple of things. First of all, uh, Disney's going to attract more advertisers, more expensive advertisers. So anyone that's partnered with makers is going to get better advertisements in front of their videos. That's I just think you're happen. right. So that's the one thing. So they're going to get better advertisers. On top of that, they can advertise their own stuff, like all the their Disney stuff. And another thing is Disney's uh, ratings have been going down for uh, TV. So like now they can actually start showing their own like TV shows, stuff like that, on YouTube and make money off their own videos. They can make a whole new generation of money for them. Like, am I personally going to watch it? Probably not. But my point is, I am like part of RPM, which is part of Makers. So, like, I know that this is just going to mean more money for everyone else. They might get more strict, though, with signing people up. That's why I literally just did another contract right now. I made them renegotiate contract and all the other stuff right now because of this, so that there's no changes later on. Yeah. I'll be locked in the contract. So, you know, that that's one thing you have to pay attention to, but... I think they're going to get more strict as Disney, so they're going to try to get more strict as they're, Disney. They're, they got a funny thing with copyright. Yeah. So, <laughs> they're so, big in copyright. I guarantee anyone that's using any of their stuff in their films, now you're going to get flagged because Disney is going to try to make money off their own product. So, Or what if they say, okay, everybody's partnered with Maker, now gets access to this little tiny vault that we put aside. This is all the stuff that you can use that's Disney-owned IP, uh, and as long as you put it down in the comments that, you know, this is Disney-owned IP, you can now use it. That'd be cool. That would be awesome, man. Yeah, that would be really cool. 
It's like, yeah, that would be awesome. Donald Duck plays, uh, <laughs> Donald Duck plays Titanfall. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't PewDiePie, PewDiePie with Maker Studios? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is. So the, would they make a lot of money off him or not? I, I don't know what his deal is, but I, I would think so. He's with Polaris, which is like the elite of Maker Studios, yeah. Because uh-huh. Polaris is like the top part and RPM is like the low part. Yeah. And then, yeah, so... Well, thanks for making my day there, not too nerdy. <laughs> Sorry. Know, huh? we're, we're on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are the chances of that? It's scary and so exciting many... at the same time, you know, because it's scary because I've, you know, I've worked for a company that's been bought three times, and every time that my company has been bought, you know, things have changed, and not always for the better, oftentimes for the worse, you know, because, like, a new CEO comes, and he wants to cut all the costs, make a big difference, you know, so that means, you know, maybe bonuses don't happen for a year or nobody gets a pay raise for a year, you know. That kind of stuff can happen when a company gets bought. But the the exciting part is it's Disney, and why else would they be buying RPM or Maker unless it was for advertising and for maybe they see the potential of YouTube for Disney and they're planning on maximizing that. Maybe they start putting advertisements in the front of everybody's videos for, you know, the new... Disney TV show that's you know airing on I don't know six o'clock on Sunday night. Well, that would suck, huh? <laughs> the, the thing is, you gotta keep in mind when when you uh, have a studio when they own the studios, they select the advertisement that goes on the videos. Right. So like yeah. they could put only their advertisements on the videos now because they have they're the ones they advertise already. Marvel, all that stuff that they own, they already advertise on other people's videos. Now they can make sure even more videos have just Disney stuff on it. And hopefully they they give their partners a good CPM for doing it. Yeah. So I'm sure they've got promotions and different things, like incentives for you to maybe sometimes like to promote something that's coming out or something like that. They'll do different things depending on what type of cha- like what type of channel you have and stuff. Disney so. owns LucasArts right now, right? Yeah. yeah. What's left of it? They like destroyed most of it, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, LucasArts kind of destroyed LucasArts. They didn't come out with a good <laughs> game for like a decade. They had that one <laughs> game that looked good, and then like they're just like, no, never mind. Was, uh, <laughs> Star Wars. It was a Star Wars twelve. 12 what was it? Twenty one something. Yeah. Yeah. 21, that game 13 looked awesome, man. Yeah, it looked good, and they're just like, nah, let's scrap that game. Yeah, that was that was a fiasco. That's you know that's sad because LucasArts was such a strong part of my childhood. Have you or guys Lucas. heard about? Um, sorry, have you heard about Full Screen? You know the network. Um, no. Screw Attack have now merged with them, so they're now one network. I saw Figco talking about this, but I didn't watch the video. I, I'm not familiar with Screw Attack is. Screw Attack. Have you heard of um, Angry Video Game Nerd? Yeah, that's what exactly yeah, I was thinking. They're basically responsible. They they post him on the website and stuff. Like, I think that's the only thing that I know that what they're off. But basically, they've turned into a network with full screen, so they're merging. That's cool. So they're gonna Screw Attack is gonna be an actual network. Mm-hmm. Yep. So and they were saying how you know you'll get the you'll get exclusives like the first Angry Video Game. You can get that earlier. You can also get T-shirts or tickets to some events that they host. You just get exclusives and stuff if you're in that network. Yeah, they have cool. conventions and stuff too. The Screw mm-hmm. Attack convention is pretty big. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask you guys about uh, the biggest news of 2014. It's going to be the biggest news of 2015, 16, 17. Uh, you didn't have to talk about my wedding again, man. Well, damn it! I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> What do you guys uh, think now that they've actually announced that The Last of Us is actually coming to PS4? How do you guys think this game is going to sell? Now, the reason I ask, they've already sold 6 million copies of the game. Yeah. 6 million. That's big sales, especially for a new IP. I'm definitely buying it. I hope that the game is only 39 bucks if I'm lucky. But I'm no, curious as to how... It'll be 60 how- bucks, and they'll put definitive on the title, so you buy it for 60 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, All the DLC never- is included. <laughs> yeah, um... If it's 60 bucks, I want to buy it either way, but I'm just curious as to how well it's going to sell. Now, that Tomb Raider Definitive Edition actually sold really well. Yeah, and um, it was excellent. It deserved to. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people were hating on it before you know, before it was released, coming out at the you know, $60 price point. Uh, I think that this game will probably sell as good, if not better. 
I mean, redone. It was uh, the last generation, the end of a generation, and the, the, the visuals of the game were so on point. The game was so beautiful. Everything was so well done. I'm stoked to see what this game is going to be about. I'm just hoping that they can do something with the price. They do can't we, keep... Do we know when it's going to happen? June. Yeah. They're saying June. They oh, said okay. during June it's going to be released and it's going to come with two DLCs. And this is still a rumor, right? This was, like, leaked by a CEO from, yeah. like, Who's... Austria? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, some it was... dude put it on his Twitter or some shit. I don't know. I don't know yeah. where it came from. So it's still a rumor, or did they actually confirm it? It sounds like it's all but confirmed it's now. Con- it's confirmed. Okay, good. I think it's a great idea. I'll buy it. Uh, I'll play through that game again in HD. I think Tomb Raider was a special situation. Not, a lot of people skipped over that game because, you know, it was another Tomb Raider game. People didn't realize how good it was. And re-releasing that right at the beginning of the PlayStation 4 life cycle when there weren't a lot of games out, I think that was a brilliant move, right? I mean, that's why I played it because, you know, I wanted to check out, you know, another PlayStation 4 game. There's so few of them. But now we're starting to see some more games come out. That might eat into some of the sales of Last of Us a little bit, but I still think it's a good idea. I mean, a lot of people switched over from Xbox 360 yeah. to the PlayStation 4, and they're going to they're gonna eat this up. They're gonna, Finally, you know, I get to play but Last of Us. My, my thing is, though, if we continue to allow this type of uh, business to take place, I think it'll be detriment to everybody. I really like the way that uh, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, Call of Duty Ghost, Battlefield, when these games came out, they had this trade-in. You could actually trade in the last gen version of the game for a discounted upgrade, which was in, in effect the PS4, the Xbox One version of the game. When they were, you know, when they announced this type of transaction, I thought that they were going to continue with it, and you know, it was going to be a staple of what these next gen ca- consoles were as far as upgrades. But it appears that that was just for those games, and now all these other, you know, revamped and. Uh, ramped up versions of old games are going to come out at full price. That's just disappointing to me. You can always wait until it gets price reduced. Yeah, Anybody wait. can wait. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't see... I want it now! <laughs> <laughs> I want then you got to pay. Now. you got to pay the want it now price, you know? If yeah. if you got the patience or if you're, if you're low on funds, just wait a few months, you know? It'll be cheap quick enough. See, it'll, it'll probably be a PlayStation Plus game quick enough. <laughs> it, it always happens when there's transition from between two different generations, and you're going to see that still. You're going to see that, and uh, Ubisoft, I guarantee you, the Assassin's Creed, they have two different Assassin's Creed's. You better believe the one is just for the last gen is going to be on next gen as well. They're just going to first release it for last gen, and then later on, six months down the line, they're going to release it for next gen as well. You know, They're going to like keep doing stuff like this on purpose because you make like twice the profit. Even if you only make half of what you did the first time, you're still making a profit for work that you didn't have to do as much because it's not too hard to raise the resolution of a game compared to doing it from scratch. So, Yeah, yeah I, I actually <laughs> like this. I like when companies kind of like, they see an opportunity to like make a better version of something that they've already made. And if there's fans out there, they're going to really enjoy that because they like the first version. So of course they're gonna like a better version of that, and if you if you you know if the thing costs a little bit more, that kind of is okay with me. You know, it'll be price reduced later. All you gotta do is wait. I don't I don't see a big problem with the price sixty dollar price point for this, especially you know, if you're coming over from the Xbox three hundred and sixty and you've never played it before. What I'm saying is I don't see a, uh, an issue with the price either. But when, once they release these remade versions of old games. And, and they hook you with a ten dollar upgrade, and that's something that you begin to expect as a consumer. You know, you see Battlefield did it, Call of Duty did it, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag did it, and you're like, okay, this is going to be pretty sweet. If I buy a PS3 game, I'll be able to go back get the PS4 version for a minimal cost. And I think that if they kind of hooked you with that. And now I don't know if they're going to completely throw it out the window. I would think so. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Personally. Yeah. I think they'll sell more copies if it was like $45, to be honest with you. If they said it's $45, you would probably sell more because there will be even more people to buy it than if it's $60. Like a lot of people just will say, oh, screw this. I feel like I'm getting screwed. Even though that they did upgrade the resolution stuff like that, a lot of people are just going to not even give it a chance because of that reason. 
But as soon as you say forty five dollars, people are like, eh, you know, I have time to play this. I always wanted to check this game out. Or it's I, not like, full price. It's not full price. Yeah. So if it's forty five, I think that's fair. Developers still make a good portion of the money. Yeah. And the the gamers will be happy because it's cheaper. So put some nice box art on the cover, something different, you know. Yeah, it's it's not like they got to go back in there and completely reprogram anything. They're just putting a fresh coat of paint on a game that's already been created. So they're not doing nearly as much work as they did initially. Why should you pay for the same amount of work over again? All they're doing is well, they still did the work to begin with. Yeah, but you want to get paid twice for the same amount of work? All you're doing well, not they, everybody's buying the game for the second time. Yeah, but for those who are, is what I'm saying. Well, they're, they're going already, to be. A, I mean, it's got to be. It's, it was such a great value the first time that you're now ready to buy it again. And it includes DLC too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it does include the, the DLC. DLC. Yeah, I'm hyped for that. What I'm saying is, I think I agree with you, not too early. I think if they release these remade, uh, graphically remastered versions of old games at a forty, forty-five dollar price point, I don't think anybody would complain. I yeah, think I think they'll get would... even more sales. To be honest, that's because, because there are going to be a lot of people who bought the game and they say, "I love the game," but I'm just I don't really want to get get it for sixty bucks exactly. again. Yeah. I mean, that's going to happen. You know, it may not happen with us because this is what we do. Of course, we're all probably going to get the game. But there's a lot of people who can't afford to buy a game they already bought a year ago again at full price. They said, like, "Man, if I want to get this game again, it's going to be thirty bucks, or I'm just going to buy something totally new." That's what they're going to say. So they're going to lose a lot of customers for pushing it out at that sixty dollar price point. I know it's going to do well, you know, because this game is one of the best games that came out on the PS3 ever. So what if they have you. an exclusive level that you can't get any other way? What level, Briar Rabbit? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, would that make it worth the $60 if they had something that you just couldn't get any other way? Never going to yeah. be available on the PS3. The only way to get it is on the PS4, the new definitive... Uh, gold box collector's edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sound is so real. I thought you were, it was a real thing. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, any anything that you can't get on the PS3 will make you know increase the value of the, the game. Um, be it new DLC or be it you know an expanded level, anything. But if you're getting the exact same thing, and especially for people who bought all the DLC, all you're getting is a graphically remastered version of a, a regurgitated game that you've already played and probably beat the hell out of. And so I think for those people, a better value would be a $45 game. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I'm not disputing that, you know, this is business and we want to make as much, as much money as we can. But I think for the people out there who, the 6 million people who have already bought the game and, uh, you know, forked over their money, that something should be done on their account. Be it free stuff or, you know, something extra as far as DLC that you can't get or a price reduction. But I think 60 bucks just for what you've already got, graphically enhanced, it's a little, a little greedy. That's just my, my perspective on it. How about this? How about they give you twenty dollars off uh, if you prove that you have the platinum trophy for the PS3? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I'll, I'll just take a picture of somebody else's and uh, email it to them. <laughs> we ready for the next topic? Yeah. All good. right. What do we got here? All right. So I think Marco and I are the only play- people who've played Titanfall at this point, right? I played. I played the beta. You played that? Okay. So would you guys prefer a Titanfall with subdued graphics but more pilots? Or do you think it's pretty good the way it is? Six six pilots on each team, you know, cool graphics. Wait, well, for what console? Like console or PC? Xbox One or PC. It doesn't matter. They could have just made a better campaign. Yeah. that would. I think that would <laughs> please a lot That's of people. What? What always sells me for a game. If it's, if the story's shit, then I don't really want to buy it. They have yeah. a campaign. They do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know they use they use the word campaign. <laughs> I think that was it. Yeah, that's the best feeling for a campaign. Everyone's a winner. You can't lose a campaign. You like, can't. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, you were talking last week about the campaign and how there's no way to tell which which levels you've won and lost. But yeah, there is an achievement link to winning all of the levels on both sides of the campaign. Yeah, I, yeah, it's true. You have to keep a tally beside me. I don't know if they changed it because I didn't really go back to the campaign. Although I do like when you play the campaign, you can actually rank up. Yeah, I like that too. You get a lot of XP in there. So, yeah, I, I, I can't get onto the IMC. I, I've been doing the militia the whole time. I keep redoing the campaign. I don't know which one I'm uh, missing out on. 
Oh, really? See, the thing I don't like about the campaign is, like, when you're doing it, like, the people that pop up on the, the top, that, like, you know, they're talking th- to you and stuff like that, like, yeah. we're winning. And, I and like, the way they talk to me is, like, if I'm losing. Like, it seems like they're not <laughs> adjusted to the game. Like, they're just doing their own thing. Well, I'm clearly winning. Our team's winning. We're completing the objective. Then they're like, you guys have to do better. Like, they're saying stuff. I'm like... What are you talking about? Are you even watching the game that I'm playing? Right now? Like that's the only thing. I think that like they just rushed it to to say we have a campaign instead of actually working on a campaign. Yeah. And like I understand why they're doing it in a way, but I just feel like what's the incentive to go back to the campaign minus the two titans that you unlock or whatever? You yeah. I mean like I actually like playing the campaign levels. Really? Yeah. I don't know. It adds some more. Like drama to the to the regular multiplayer. What's well, super weird to me about that game is that you have all these mechs and none of them can fly. None of them had jetpacks. <laughs> none of that shit. It's like, dude, what mech game are you playing? It's you called Warrior Ball, man. Ball. <laughs> Armored, Armored Core. They can fly around. Well, part, uh, part, Zone part of two, Enders. Part two will be called Titan Fly. <laughs> right, Titan fly. Just, you know, have a so good do you time. guys think that game should have been like a forty or fifty dollar game then, because it didn't include a campaign? Well, you know, a real campaign, a single player campaign. Or do you think it was uh, price justified with the, just the multiplayer? I don't think it was the uh, the price was not justified, but not just because of that. It's because the the weapons and stuff like that. It's not like. A, a complete list of we- like uh, items. There's not enough weapons, not enough stuff, and like you know they're gonna include that for the DLC and other stuff. And that's the thing that to me it's like they didn't finish the game, and yet yeah. they're gonna add these things later to force you to buy. So like to me that's why it doesn't equal sixty dollars. Not just the campaign. It could have been fine if they had more weapons and stuff. But the fact that later on they're gonna add a couple titans here and there. Here's another couple weapons, and then they're gonna do the same thing later on. Here's another map or two. Now I feel like they're just grabbing too much money from the people because I agree with you. If I wasn't having so much goddamn fun with the game, (laughs) like it's just like I'm playing it so much, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Like I I know that I'm going to be playing this for a year, right? And like they could have paid, they could have charged. A year comes down the road, right? And I'm still playing Titanfall. And if somebody asks me how much do you think you should have paid for this game, I'll be like, well, I mean. What's a fair price for hundreds of hours of entertainment, you know? I think I would have been happy to even pay 100 bucks If I knew I was going to play the whole year, I would have been happy with 100 bucks. Like, yeah, that's the hours unknown, so unknown. Fair. Unknown, yeah. yeah. My thing that I don't get is they make you pay uh, $25 for the, the season pass or whatever, but yeah. then on top of that, they're also releasing DLC packs that you have to pay for. It's like yeah. if, you're, if you're buying a season pass, you should get every damn thing that's released for the, the, the game. Call of Duty did that, too. I think they started that with Modern Warfare 3, and it pissed a lot of people off. Or was it Black Ops 2 that they started doing that, where you'd buy the season pass and you got all the map packs, but you didn't get, like, gun camos and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that was Black Ops 2, yeah. Was it Black Ops 2? And that pissed a lot of people off. I, I'll be honest with you, those things are so cheap anyway. I think if I was 15, right, yeah. I'd be really pissed about it, because but, I yeah. just gave you... Sixty dollars for the game, then I, I get another sixty dollars for the season pass, and now you're gonna nickel and dime me two or three dollars at a time. As an adult, I'm less concerned. I mean, two or three dollars at a time—that's less than I spend on iTunes on an average day. Is you it know, like fifteen dollars so, though? I thought I heard it was fifteen dollars. For fifteen dollars for Titanfall the next, season. The next, no, the next pack. The, the season is twenty. It's twenty dollars, but I'm talking about like the next uh, DLC or something like that. It's yeah, 14, yeah, fifteen. Yeah. Team oh, is it ten? I thought it was ten here. Ten or fifteen. It's one or the other. But like it's not the normal five for DLC. It's literally ten or fifteen. So like they're literally tacking on the the twenty dollars for season pass and then another ten or fifteen dollars. That's why like I'm like now the I season think pass is three map packs for twenty five dollars. Yep, that's what you get with that. And then they're releasing like like all the mech stuff, all the extra guns, all the all that type of stuff is that's gonna, gonna be, be all piecemeal. Yep. Yeah. So basically, the game will be complete. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe in a year. Maybe in about a year. Third DLC, but it's funny because everybody says this game is like a new IP. It's never been made before. But you guys remember this game? Yeah. Megasalt? Oh, it's a yeah. total remake yeah. of it. 
But this one, actually, this one makes you fly, so there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, total, uh, total copy. Mega Salt, the first one, was the first game I played on Xbox Live. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Marco, yeah. what you should do is do a comparison video of both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Let's I have the same oh, graphics, too. <laughs> Now, um, what do you think, Briar Rabbit? I know initially you didn't know if you were going to be able to play this game for a year, but it sounds like now you know for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's it's so deep. The levels are so big, but they're intricate enough that it really takes a while to learn them. Learning the best route from one place to another uh, is really fun with the parkour mechanics, like jumping from wall to wall. Just learning that parkour mechanic, you're getting better at that. That's something that's new to me. That's not a that's not a gameplay feature that I'm familiar with. Normally, I've been kind of playing it to the ground, uh, Call of Duty style, and so that's how Thunder play. Thunder plays on the ground, and so they, if I, yeah. If I was able to do that parkour, I'd be doing that all day long. So yeah, get, it's it's really fun. You know? that. Jumping up onto rooftops, taking a couple pot shots and jumping into a building, then bouncing between two buildings to get places really fast. And then you got a Titan, you know, you, you call in your Titan and it becomes almost this, it's a different game, you know, between being a pilot and being a Titan. And when I first started playing, I just let my Titan go off and do its own thing because I was just, I was a Call of Duty player and I was focused on killing as many pilots as I could. But now I look forward to getting my Titan because I've gotten better at using it, I've learned some more strategies about how to not only score more points, but also not die immediately once I've been put into it. And I'm really enjoying that aspect of it, too. So it's like, I think it's a really deep multiplayer experience. Uh, adding levels, adding more guns, I think all of that stuff will add to it. As long as they don't do any kind of pay-to-win guns, I really hate when companies do that. But they seem to be pretty responsible about this. Like, they could have definitely charged for those burn cards. You know, like, you got to pay, you know, 50 cents for a pack of burn cards. They could have definitely done that. And they didn't. So, we'll see. Okay, so that was, you said a lot. Let me abbreviate that. You've been really enjoying using the big one because you've been using it a lot more and getting better with it. Sounds yeah, good. That's okay. true. <laughs> that, is, that sums it up nicely. <laughs> you ever play a game called, uh, called Shoe Mania? You ever no. seen that game? Like, was the game that really used that element to jump off walls and stuff and shoot it. Like that one is like they use that in like like professional tournaments stuff like that. It's a very precise game. Like Shoe Mania. If you get a, if you ever get a chance, look that up. But uh, that's the element. What, what, that's what it reminds what, me of. What console, not too nerdy? Uh, that's PC. PC. Yeah. That's PC definitely, game. if you ever look that up, that it's exactly the style that they pretty much am, are using. And, like, so that's why a oh, lot of people... Oh, it's, like, red and blue. The, the characters yeah. are, like, red and blue. Yep. Yeah, blue. Like Power Rangers walls, a little bit. Side yeah, I saw side. Yeah. That's exactly how you play the game. That's where they got the elements from. But they also got it from, you know, Unreal Tournament. Like, a lot of people say that's why this game oh, sort of yeah. combines a bunch of games together. Unreal Tournament, Mech... Warrior, and then like it's there, and Call of Duty, they combine those three, and that's it. Which is still a unique, unique game on its own. It's just that the elements have been there before, and I think like that's what's turning away some people. But like the one thing that they need to fix, and I keep going over this because I keep seeing it still. Like they refuse to fix is the matchmaking. Like the matchmaking in that game, they fixed it already. They put in a fix. There's a it's it's a beta still, but like if you go if you scroll all the way down to like through all the different matches, there's a new one that's attrition only, which is you know uh, team, team death match. match. But it's uh it's a new it's a new way. So they drop the teams at least every three games that you play. So you start with a totally from scratch with a new team and a new team that you're playing against. But it's also more skill based. So they so they balance it now because they're the PC balancing version. It yeah. I had a huge problem with them, and like you'll, it'll be such a mis mismatch, and you're stuck with that team. And yeah, like, and you keep, keep playing, playing the, the same team too. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you're just consistently getting your ass kicked, or you're consistently just blowing the other team out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't mind keep winning though. I mean, if you're gonna keep winning, I'll stay on that team so you can level up quickly. <laughs> yeah, but... it, it tends to be more fun. <laughs> yeah. I also, I've been really impressed with the kind of the art, and I, I think that's what's kind of kept me going back to the campaign. Because I like that, you know, I was a big fan of the Firefly TV series when that was on TV, and now that it's on Netflix, and it really reminds me of that. It's 
very, very much the kind of same kind of thing. And I like that too, that kind of space western. I kind of the only thing I'm disappointed with, like the way it looks, is like I like the way it looks. I feel like if they got away from the Source engine, they would have had a better chance of making it look better. The yeah. fact that the Source en- engine, it's like it's that's a ten year old engine, game engine. Yeah. So I like the was, I like the art style. I'm not necessarily yeah. high on the the technical, you know, graphical prowess of the game. Because you know that the the PC version is still capped, right? Like you can't get over sixty frames. They won't do the patch yet. And it's it's ridiculous why a PC version can't get over 60 frames per sec. Like that's the reason why you're playing on a PC version in the first place, so you can have all the higher specs. But I mean, I noticed, I noticed that during the beta. When I was playing the beta, I tried to turn it all the way up, and I, it wouldn't allow me to at all. I was like, "What is this shit?" <laughs> it locked you 1080p. I'm like, I, now you could go to 1440p, but like I couldn't go any higher than that. I wanted to see if I could go to the 4K. And it wouldn't even let me do 4K, so I'm like, all right. Like, it, it won't even let you. It won't even let you adjust it. Go I mean, up, I yeah. probably would have ran 4K maybe 40 frames per second, but still, like, I wanted to see it. That would have still, like, that, that yeah, still, still been, been fucking amazing. <laughs> that would have been fucking awesome to see that in 4K. I watched that video all day long. <laughs> Dude, but, like, nope, they won't. <laughs> so all I'm right, thinking now. To... Go ahead. Real quick question. Now that we've had Inf- uh, Infamous Second Son and Titanfall come out, do you think they were good contenders against each other for uh, the month of March, guys? No. No, hell no. No, I think Infamous sold, or, uh, I think Titanfall sold more, to be honest with you. Sold more? Sold more. I don't, I don't, I don't, no. I don't know. No, no hey, like by, by numbers already, they already surpassed. Infamous already, they had Infamous a already beat them, too. Really? They had over yeah. it's 1.1 just pre-orders. And that wasn't even after the release. And then even more people bought it in different countries because PlayStation 4 released a bundle with it. So, like... Yeah. Like, like for, for instance, in the UK, uh, the PS4 hardware sales went up 106% because of the release of this yeah. game. Wow. This game has been selling, like... Re- and, and they outdid Titanfall in uh, the UK as well. Yeah. When Titanfall came out versus Infamous, Infamous screamed them. I mean, I, I think Infamous is a hell of a game. Not just that. Ground Zero's beat. Titanfall in wow. UK. So really? Ground Zero was, was number two. It was, um, wow. it was first uh, Infamous and then Ground Zeroes and then Titanfall. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, Titanfall did not do what they're supposed to do. Wow. I'm going to move to the UK. They got some taste. We got so, good character here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all of my friends like that have Titanfall, they're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't play it anymore at all. Like, they just really? pop it. I think it was wow. just the type. Yeah. Like, my boyfriend hasn't played it in about, like, three weeks. And he was real big on it, you know. I love Titan 4 and all that shit. And I'm just like... That sounds like a good man to me. Oh, man. So, uh, 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 Connie, um, how did you like Ground Zeroes? Did you enjoy that game? Uh, What are your thoughts on it? How long did it take you to beat it? Just tell me just overall what you thought. Okay. I actually really loved it. I think it was worth the price. I think people are just... Being pussies, really. I mean, you knew it was going to be. You knew it was going to be two hours long. Everyone knew, and everyone knew the price, but they're still like moaning about it. And I've still like I took. Apparently, it took me 116 hours to beat it, but I sort of took my time because I knew it was short. But a lot of the time, I thought it ended when it didn't. So I think it was all right for me because everyone was like, because obviously you had guys had it earlier than I did. So everyone was like, oh, it's so short, oh my god. So, like, um, without spoiling anything, when you rescue the first person, I thought that was the end of the mission. And I was like, oh, i got a whole lot of shit to do. <laughs> and so now I'm, like, said, doing the day that took you, uh, it, it took you how long to beat it now? 116 hours. Just to you, got your, you got your money's worth, girl. Damn, son. I, I did so, it took me all day. So I played a bit, and then I went to did some other shit that day, and then I came back. But well, like to be honest, I'm not very good at games. <laughs> I died a lot, so I, uh, I think I got rank C. When I when I beat it, I think I beat it in 33 minutes. You played but, the whole uh, thing in 33? Yeah, 33 just minutes. Just the main story, though. Just the main mission, right? Yeah, yeah. just yeah. The, the two extractions. It's really easy, man. It really is. If you, I mean, once you figure out where they're at, you can just breeze right through it. But there is a lot of content, man. I still haven't even um go on to any of the side missions. I just wanted to go through the, the main campaign to see how much I'd like that. And, uh, I'd what recommend I'd... the side missions. There's even a few Easter eggs 
bits and some of them really good, especially the Deja Vu mission. But do you know how to get the Deja Vu mission? No. Yeah. You have I don't. to get um you have to get nine Oxoth patches, the opposite of Fox. You've got to find all of them and then you unlock the Deja Vu mission and I think it's really good. It's oh. really nostalgic. Did you hey. answer Connie? Did you answer all the questions, the quiz questions? I haven't done that bit yet. Yeah, really yes. Once you beat the Deja Vu mission, they ask you quiz questions. You have to get it right. If you get it right, then oh, you, that's really? how you unlock uh, Classic Snake, and you unlock another character. I don't know if I want to spoil it for you now. Oh, oh, I'm so right excited. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I didn't know all this shit. I'm excited, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Other characters, when, I, so. when I completed the main mission, there's a percentage at the bottom. I think it's like you complete 7% if you just do the main mission. Yeah. Like, there's loads of shit you can do, and you don't even have to, like, there's so many different ways to complete the first main mission and all the other ones, so I don't know why everyone, everyone's stupid. Yeah, hey, and Beastly, you'll, yeah. be, you'll be walking around trying to find these damn patches, and the last one, you'll be walking around forever trying to find yeah. the damn thing. It's on your character. <laughs> you lay on the I ground have, and roll around, and it'll pop off of you, and then you go get it. What? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, thank you for thank you for saving me that term. Yeah, it, it took me like two and a half hours to figure that out, dude. And then I was just like, I'm googling this shit. Dude, I'm so close to getting like more S ranks, man. I got S ranks for the main mission. I beat it in 40 minutes, no alerts or anything, and I I was sprinting. I was sprinting like headshotting people with the to tranquilizer. tranquilizer yeah. And like I'm running around, kind of memorize like the patterns for everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, that's what you do. If you memorize the patterns for some of these missions, man, it, it's so much fun to go again to try to see if you could do it, if you time everything perfectly. So it, it's a lot of fun, man. Like, so, so, not too nerdy, you beat this game totally, right? Everything? For No, I still need S rank for... I mean, I beat everything, but I, I only got, like, A rankings for some. I'm trying to get S rank, which is, like, the, the best you could do. That's, like, the superb award. Okay. I got, I got a comment and a question. My comment is this. How do Yokojima and, and uh, Konami could have went about this thing totally different if they didn't discern the main mission and side quests? If they just said it's it's a game, these side quests are going to come afterwards, it's kind of a you know a demo letting you know what's going to happen. If they didn't say main mission versus side quests, how long would that game have been? See, the thing is, man, that the game is longer, way longer, because you got to look at it. If you're doing side missions, like, what's your goal of the side mission? Are you just trying to beat it, or you're trying to actually get a trophy for it? Because if you're trying to get a trophy for it, that's going to take you a long time for all these side missions. So you have to be perfect. That That's the thing. You have to memorize the patterns and, like, certain things. If you do one mistake, it might screw up your ranking. You know what I mean? Like, there's different things in the game. Like, I can play a game a certain way, and I saw 9 to 5 gamers beat it a different way, and, like, he literally... Like had headshots, killing people. Yeah, yeah, I was mowing them down like Soulcom style, like whap 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 whap. You know what I mean? There's more than one way to play, and I think that Kojima, like he just did what he, you know, this is not the first time that he released something like this. You know, it's just been years since he did it, but like all the other Metal Gear Solids had different parts to it. They had like a different Metal Gear Solid Two had something before the main Metal Gear Solid Two. Do you know what I mean? And the whole side there were the VR campaigns and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. they, they had this before. You know what I mean? It's just that people nowadays get upset because the money issue. So no one forced you to buy it. Like, you knew the price ahead of time. Or, or, or I'll, I'll take a cue from Briar Rabbit. You can wait for that shit to be $10. <laughs> <laughs> or free on Play, PlayStation Plus. <laughs> yeah, that one too. <laughs> I think a lot of people get pissed because they know that the main story you can beat in 10 minutes, but nobody does side shit anymore in games. They just want to beat the game, call it done, and put it on their damn shelf. <laughs> but the yeah, thing but is, normally the, the game... Yeah. Sorry. The thing oh, is, yeah. all, all the set tapes that you can get in different side missions, yeah. it builds more to the main story, so you know more about the villain Skullface, and there's a bit where he interrogates someone, and then you find out his whole backstory, and like yeah. you wouldn't get that unless it was in a side mission. So yeah, like it's worth know, like, going into them. You gotta like hold them down and like choke the dude to find out where the other ones are and stuff, and then it marks it on the map. That's slick. I like yeah. all that. Nor normally, I don't play the side mission stuff unless I really enjoyed it the first playthrough. Going, you know, like yeah. if I play Bioshock, I'll see if I find an audio log, I'll pick it up. Like, but I don't go out searching for every single one. But then I like the game so much, and I like the plasmids, and I like all that stuff so much that I actually went through and started looking for all those. I actually got one of those guides and you know, found every audio log because it was super fun. So, I mean, 
if you if you're not a huge Metal Gear Solid fan, or it's probably not the best value for you. But yeah. if you are, it sounds like it might be a good value. Because there's also things that like people you save in the main mission that a lot of people skipped over. You know, like you could save hostages. You could save. There's one person about to be executed. That's one of the goals to get S ranking. You have to save him before he gets executed. A lot of people don't even know this because they don't even read into it. Like it says yeah. like this that there's ways to do better in that mission. And the reason why, he's pretty much training you because when the main story comes out, there's going to be a lot of things you're probably going to need to do to unlock certain weapons or certain things that you're going to need for bosses later. So, I know. Like, what were you going to say, Beastly Gamer? I think that this engine, man, um, this is the first Metal Gear Solid game that's truly, like, open like this. And this uh, this new Fox engine, I think this shit is awesome. I mean, just overall, the, the way it looks, the way it plays, the, the non-player characters, intelligence of it. I think it's going to be incredible. I can't wait. I want to grab that definitely day one on PS4. I'm just shocked. I, I, I wish we could get a discount, though, to yeah. buy this one. I might do, because if you look at your Ground Zeroes case, I don't know where mine is, it says on the cover somewhere on one of the sheets. Um, oh, let me look for it, actually. I know you get so exhibitions. It says um, you get a DLC, or you get some sort of bonus thing for yeah. when Phantom Pain comes out. Oh, okay. So it's only right for Phantom here. Pain. This thing right here, right? Yeah, make sure you don't show your code. Oh, there ain't no code on there. Yeah, good call. He's <laughs> 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 right there. Hold on. What was it again? <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a picture. <laughs> Google Enhance. Because <laughs> hey, Connie, uh, Metal, Metal Gear is like your favorite game, right, Connie? Yep, I love it. What's your What's your favorite Metal Gear? Snake Eater. Yeah. Um. I love Snake Eater so much. The amount of times I've played through that. And, like, another good re way of saying that is how many different ways you can defeat the end. Like, I think Hideo's always tried to have a certain way that you can complete a game so many different ways. Yeah. The first one for me. For PlayStation 1, Metal Gear Solid. Same here. All time. Same here. All time. Same here. <laughs> I, I, I had never known anything about any Metal Gear, and my buddy uh, Akmo came over, and uh, he let me borrow it, and that was a totally new type of experience, and there it is, sitting over there in my copy. Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation 1 is one of, my, one of my favorite games of all time, and it changed the world of gaming, really, because never had there been an actual narrative-driven game of espionage and, and stealth that was, you know, playable in this kind of way, and it, it revolutionized things for me. It was awesome. Psychokinesis, man. <laughs> Psychomantis. Psychomantis. Ooh. He fixed that. He went right away, and he's like, nope, Psychomantis. <laughs> I love that. Yep. This is a great game. <laughs> Anybody play the old NES versions? No, I, yeah. I played it yeah. I played it on Nintendo, and uh, it, was, it wasn't my cup of tea, man, but it was a different game. It was a different time. You know? they were, yeah, they were popular back in the day, but Solid really changed up the formula. You, if you get the Metal Gear HD collection, you can actually play them on that game on your computer, yeah. on your PS3 rather. Sorry, like they come with um, Snake Eater, I think. If you go on the down bar in the menu, you can play all the Metal, just Metal Gear ones. All right, are we ready for a new topic? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, sure. All right, what do I got here? Sony is rolling out. <laughs> oh, the newest update for the PlayStation Vita, which includes the ability to display more applications on the home screen and a new calendar app. Is anybody going to use their Vita as a calendar? I thought that was the stupidest feature I ever saw on a video game console. <laughs> Sometimes I'm playing, I forget what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I can see Not Too Nerdy Now playing... Is today Sunday? <laughs> Beastly thoughts. <laughs> like I read that, I was like, they're giving us a calendar for the PS Vita, but they're not going to give us video output. Come on, like, what are they spending their time on here? <laughs> and it doesn't seem like that'd be too hard. I think that'd be the number one thing that people would really want is the ability. I mean, they did it with the PSP, man. Yeah. The ability to do output video to a TV or HDMI or something. Can you imagine that? That would make the, you know, just YouTube. Let me play my Vita game on the PS4, on the TV. You know, just beam it over. I'd be happy with that. I don't even need a video out on the PS Vita. Yep, because, I mean, if you can play them on your... And that's another thing, man. Have any of you guys tried uh, Segway? Infamous on your Vitas? No. No. 
I'm doing that today. I want to see what it's all about. But yeah, the fact that you can play your PS4 games on your Vita, it doesn't seem like it'd be too hard to reverse engineer that. Shoot your Vita footage over to your PS4 and play it on the big screen. I think that'd be awesome. It and then like take that HDCP off so I can capture it. Well, that, that's that's on, <laughs> that's on the future update, Brian. It's, yeah, the uh, HDCP. Yeah, that's 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 being removed. I think coming in be, April, right? It's uh, update, coming? Yeah, update one point zero seven or something. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking forward to that because the only way I can record my gameplay is just clicking the old share button, and that's getting old. Yeah, oh, well, and the quality of it, it looks like yeah. poop. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Do you, does anybody use the Twitch streaming app on the PS4? Or does everybody use like a second solution if they want to stream? I use uh, it. It's I, horrible. I, <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly they're supposed to be updating that too, along yep. with that patch. Yeah. Seven twenty p now. Yep. That's good. I don't. You know, my internet connection. Connection can really only handle 720p. Not too nerdy. You probably have a different experience with that. <laughs> he's got he's got alien internet. <laughs> hey Connie, um, do you have an Elgato or what type of capture card do you use? I have a Ruxio. Now you know that there there actually is a workaround, but now that they actually uh, are removing the HTC, I mean HCP. You can I actually... did try and do the workaround, but it didn't seem to work for me. And the tutorial I watched, I swear I wanted to punch this little boy in the face. He was just like, <laughs> his camera, he was like, okay, I'm going to plug it in now. And all you hear is like... <laughs> and he was like... <laughs> he had the wait, wait, worst wait, wait, wait. accent I could ever... He was like, all right, now I'm going to plug it in. I'm like, oh my god. And then I never got it working, and I thumbs down the shit out of his video. <laughs> So I'm just waiting for the update. Here's the problem oh, with man. that, though. All right, this is my problem with it. HDCP. Hold on, hold on. I love how serious you just got after she was talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to be serious, man. She had me cracking up like, put your I thought you were going to tell her not to hit kids or something. No, no, no. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock that little motherfucker out. I want to take a moment here. We do not condone the beating of children. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. No, on the top that pops up. <laughs> like, no, what I was going to say is that I don't trust trust the HDCP for Sony because as you see, when you click the share button for Twitch and you're on Twitch, but then you go back to the main menu, it, it shuts it off and all you can hear is the audio portion. It's going to do the same thing for HDCP because remember, they're going to have to keep it on when, you're, when there's video, Netflix or anything like that. They're going to have to put HDCP back on. It's gonna go back on any time you use a device that has movies or something like that, and then it yeah, shuts back off. It's not game sixty work like that. So that's why I don't not going to trust, because that means also a developer or anyone else could also cut it off at certain parts of the game. So I don't want to, I want to be fully controlled. That's why I'm just gonna keep my setup regardless of what they do, because. Yeah. That's, but but not too nerdy. Do you have to uh, get that update on your PS4? Is it optional? For what? What do you mean? When this new update comes out, with this new no, HDCP, you you have to you have to get the update anyway. But to me, it's not gonna make a difference because I'm not gonna switch it off. You you they're gonna give you an off button on it, so like you can switch it off. That's or leave it I, the way it is. It take you about the way we've been. I'm doing. gonna do the same thing I've been doing because I know that that's what's gonna happen. Like it's gonna go back on by itself during certain parts of the game if they choose to. I'm not saying they're going to do it, but they have a choice to do it. But also, if you want to do the main menu of the PlayStation, they're not going to let you record that either sometimes, so that's so why so like if a, a big cutscene is about to happen in like uh, Watch Dogs then they'll just cut that off, so HTCP will turn it turn on so that you can't record it and put it posted on YouTube and spoil that portion of the video for everybody. Yeah, that's the thing, like they have the option to do that, so that's the thing like not to say they're going to do it, but like they have the option to do it Yeah. they, they could just turn yeah. it on whatever because remember, it's still there for Netflix and everything else, so it's gonna do the same thing. Right, Rabbit, you just got me excited. Mention and Watch Dogs, damn it! <laughs> Are you guys excited about that game? I mean, initially we heard about uh, Infamous Second Son having a graphical downgrade. What do you guys have to say about that now after playing the game? I don't think it's nowhere near what people were talking about. So am I. I, think that, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I agree. The game seems perfectly fine to me, man. It still looked like one of the best, graphically one of the best games I've ever seen, um, especially an open world action game. I don't think I've seen anything that really could compete. You know, uh, what about you, Brian Rabbit? Did you see that graphical downgrade that they were talking about? Are you talking about If It Was Second Son? Mm-hmm. No, I had, no, I hadn't, I hadn't heard of that story. So, 
Yeah, it was. I wasn't same, looking for it. Look good it to me. Same, the same type of debacle that they have with Watch Dogs. I don't know, man. Uh, Watch Dogs looks really good to me. I saw the still images of um, Infamous Second Son that they were trying to say were graphically downgraded, and when I saw the images, it it did look a little bit brighter, and maybe the colors had been a little bit more bland. But playing the game, there's no way. I don't feel like there's any way they graphically downgraded it, and hopefully it's the same situation with Watch Dogs because you know when the the, the original E3 video of Watch Dogs came out and they looked totally mind blown, mind boggling graphics, and then they they showed the more recent footage and it just looked like GTA 5 or something. Hopefully uh, when this game comes out, it'll at least look as good as Infamous. The games always look better in video too than they do in screenshots to me. See, the thing is that I'm wondering, because you said that's the best looking one right now. I, I don't know, it's a coin flip. 9 to 5 Gamer, because you, you actually had Ground Zeroes for the PS4, and you also had Infamous Second Son, right? Yeah. So do you think, which one do you think was better? I mean, I think I Infamous think... looked better, but Ground Zeroes ran better? Is that, it yeah, ran yeah, fluid, yeah, yeah. Right? I, think, I think there was not a frame rate drop in Metal Gear, and you see my playthrough. I was tearing shit up, so <laughs> everything was blowing up. So <laughs> there was a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> You just so, sold me on watching this playthrough. <laughs> I don't, I don't, it's, I don't playthrough think... it's like Michael Bay playing Ground Zeroes. Right? It's oh, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. what the hell? He stole a truck and he's driving around shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and Infamous, there's a lot of stuff going on in that game as well. But they have more, way more particle effects and all that shit going on. You know, like everything you're doing, there's particle effects happening. Like using the using the chain, shooting anything, anything you blow up, it's like particle effects everywhere. For it to drop slightly when that stuff's going on, I'm perfectly fine with that, man. Like it's gonna happen. That that's gonna happen, especially this early in the stage of the system. And I think even the second sun is locked at 30 frames, isn't it? That's the thing that was weird about it. It's not locked at 30. It's, it's not. It was, um, uh, what is it called, Digital uh, Foundry. They actually did the the thing, and it's 30 frames, and it went up to 40, and it, sometimes it's at it's a 60, and then it dropped back down, which is weird because I heard it's supposed to be locked at 30, but they never locked it, so well, sometimes so, it, it would jump up. Like, I don't know if you guys know it. Did you guys play Infamous at all today? There was a patch today. And supposedly they're working on making it so you can select the frame rates within the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the patch today. Yeah, so they're working on fixing all the frame rates in the game itself to make it so it runs at steady 60 frames. I saw very little slowdown in that game, though. I mean, it's so it's it's so minute. It's really really hard to notice it. And like I said, man, especially the particle particle effects when you do your special attacks. And then yeah. when you come back and you spiral, you see all the particles like watching fucking Jurassic Park. I was like, <laughs> can't believe this shit, man. It looked great. Yeah. Connie, if you, if you haven't played that game, definitely give that game a shot. If it's it was a lot like better suck, than the first two. Cause it's, I yes. 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 Well, yes. The first two, is more. it feels more like a comic book. They, um, they took this one and gave it a, a higher degree of realism. And uh, Troy Baker... And the actors in this game brought yeah, like the they, they brought a little bit more um, realism and emotion to the game. The story is really good. I think that um, I would have preferred it if some of the side characters had hung around a little bit more and had a, a more varied role in the game. But overall, I had a great time playing. I think the game is awesome. The one question I had for everyone that played the game: What's your favorite power? Neon. 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 Neon, yeah. me too. <laughs> I hate the, the bird thing was a joke. That bird power, I used it just to get off that building, and other than that, I never used it again. <laughs> well, that actually, actually, when you upgrade these powers, they, they, they get, you know, you get better shit. It's like when you first start off with Neon, you can run short distances, and then all of a sudden you can do infinite run. You can run forever, mm -hmm. and that, that sold me there. When I used uh, Concrete, I didn't like it. Then I started to see what the upgrades are all about, and you can do a lot there. Video, same thing. Once you upgrade his ability to fly and stuff, it's it's really uh, once you start to really get into the upgrade system, you can uh, you know really it's diverse. My like, problem with that is they gave you concrete and then the game ended and I was like, ended really? Right Word? There, yeah. <laughs> it ended right there. As soon as you, I mean, right when you get the concrete, it was over. The good it, karma ability for Neon was crazy because like I didn't know that because when I was doing the evil playthrough, I went back to the do the good playthrough and next thing I know. I'm able to slow up time and then yep. shoot with the legs. Like, yeah, that's, super legs. that's the dopest power <laughs> in the game. I'm like, what? <laughs> it just stops time and you can shoot them. Like, that's something you can't do with evil karma. So. And, and check it out. 
I use that one a lot too, but the one that's easier for you to like to build up your special attack with is smoke. Because if you hit L one with smoke, you throw like a little concussion grenade, mm -hmm. and they'll instantly be confused, and you can just run right to them, slam them to the ground, and it's over. Build it up, and then grab a new power and go go ham on them. By the way, that's how you beat um, someone at one scene. I can't say it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. You nearly spoiled something. <laughs> but seriously though, Connie, um, if you get an op an opportunity and, and you and, you know you're able to get the game for the low low, that's what we yeah. say here in America for the cheap cheap. <laughs> um, if you get it for the low low, yeah, definitely get that game a shot. And I'm thinking now with um, Titanfall and uh, Infamous, the PS4 is even looking better now because Titanfall and the Xbox One is looking. It looks really good. It's really fun. A lot of people are enjoying it. I haven't played it, but everybody in China is not wrong about Rice. I know Briar loves it. Marco, you love it. The world is loving the game, so I know it's fun. But the thing is, Infamous will never be out on the Xbox One ever. Well, at this point, at least. And we know the Titanfall 2, Titanfly, is coming to the PlayStation 4. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's the thing. Now we, we know that in the future we'll have a Titanfall, which will more than likely be better than the one that's out now on the PS4. So you get to enjoy all those other exclusives and still get Titanfall, which is Xbox One's selling point. That is a selling point for the, the Xbox One. Had to just interject that beast, that beastly thought today. <laughs> You know, I don't understand. Why don't they make Titanfall cross-platform? There's nothing. There's nothing stopping them from making it cross-platform. If they use their own servers, there's absolutely nothing that I can't play with somebody who has PlayStation 4. It's just they choose not to and keep the uh, keep them separate and sell more games. I guess I don't know. They like to segregate us. Well, it has, it's all racism. It's, it's all Microsoft. racism. It's Microsoft's <laughs> choice on that one. Like that's. It's even though it's their server, they want people to buy an Xbox One. They want people. Yeah to get away from Xbox 360 too. That's another reason why they won't let Xbox 360 people play with Xbox One. They want people to go to Xbox One. So it doesn't make any business sense for them to say, okay, you could do that. They don't want that. Because then why, has, what's your incentive to play for them? Has anyone seen Titanfall for the 360? <laughs> I saw a picture that said yeah. Titanfall for 360. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, no one has seen that. How the hell are they expecting it? I mean, I know it's going to sell, but God, I mean... If you're, you're going to release footage of the game the day it releases, I mean, it's not. I mean, everyone knows it's that it won't be as good as the Xbox One version. So why that's, not? Just... That's that's my problem with that. If you're waiting for that version of the game, you might as well just buy an Xbox One and call it a day, man. Like, don't wait. But you see, that's why I think I personally think it's the opposite way. I think that it actually looks decent, but they refuse to release it on purpose. <laughs> They want they people want to do people to, to buy Xbox they One. They don't want people to know that how close they are. Oh, that's going. some devious shit. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There's, because think about it. If they delayed it, the amount of time that they delayed it, what can you possibly fix in that amount of time? Nothing. There's zero. There's nothing. You don't delay a game like that. You delay the game we for a couple months. we got to turn up the graphics on level 7. Yeah. Okay, there's, there's no reason to do that. <laughs> to me, they're doing it because they want the more people to say, I want to play this now. It's not fair to everyone else that's playing it now. So they go out and get an Xbox One. You get it? That's my personal feeling on it. We'll see. But I honestly don't think that it's going to look horrible. I think it's going to look pretty decent. And people are going to be like, wait a second. This is 720p right now. Why am I going to upgrade it to, what is it, 796p? What's, yeah. Why would I do that? Pay $500 for that. I'm going to buy it on the 360 and go ham on those kids. <laughs> that is true. That is true. You've seen every map. You know every nitty and cranny now. That would be, be awesome. You've got a lot of awesome. good videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wait. I Briar Rabbit, you have to do uh, another video. You are my first when it, when the 360 comes yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and have like five dudes lined up and just take them all out. <laughs> Hey, uh, not too nerdy. Did you know that uh, you know Watch Dogs supposedly coming out on the Wii U? I still don't think it's coming out, but uh, you know it's getting switched on release day. Do you think that's because of Mario Kart? Do you have a feeling that that is why? That they, they Mar like Mario Kart, Mario Kart, and Watch Dogs comes out three days different. Mm -hmm. It's three days gap. Do you think that's why? Is because they're scared of Mario Kart, which they mm -hmm. should be. It's either that or Nintendo. Because remember, Nintendo has a separate day for when they release games. They have like their own weird day. You know what I mean? So if I think that they just it was probably a deal that they had with them to switch it up. You know what I mean? They had a, a deal just so they wouldn't lie on the same day to give people some time. 
it's not that they're going to go really head to head because Ubisoft, to be honest, with you, I don't think Ubisoft thinks that they're going to do well in that, with the Wii U anyway. Yeah. They knew that going into it. So, like, yeah. they really, you know, I'm sure that they probably had agreement with Nintendo to space it out because there's not too many games for them right now, so it gives the people a chance to buy both of them. So... I'm buying either both way. either way, but I'm not buying I'm not buying Watch Dogs on Wii U. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Coming to people that have a Wii U are not going to buy it for Watch Dogs. I would just like to have a Wii U. And you know what they're, they're playing Wii. right now is Wind Waker. Yeah, Wind yeah. Waker. That's, oh, that's, that's a great games. game. Wind it looks Waker. amazing. It looks like they're playing a Nickelodeon cartoon. Yeah. 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 So that's the exact idea. Yeah, that's cool. I'm sorry, Cranny. What were you going to say? I was just saying I wish I had something to play on my Wii U as it collects dust. Like, yeah. I probably get watched. Wind Waker. Do you play I Donkey probably... Kong? No. <laughs> that game's awesome. That game's amazing. Yeah. I feel well, a lot... hmm? You can always uh, grind up some lead and put it on the top of your controller and get a magnet and use it as an extra sketch. <laughs> <laughs> this game I haven't even played yet. I haven't even put it in my system. I can't see it. What is it? What is Wonderful 101. I have not played this. I got it as a gift for my boss, and I still haven't played it. I haven't heard things about it. It was a fun he, game. He it's supposed to be game. really good. It's supposed to be really good. Actually. Wait till Wonderful 102 comes out. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but the Wonderful 101 actually is the only game, I think, yeah, I think that's the only game that that Wii U gamepad works for. Because you could, like, it's quicker to draw that the, the shapes that you need to draw than it is to try to do the motion of the shape. Because when you draw a shape, they form into that shape, and that's the weapon that you use. So, yeah, like... There's... There's certain parts where you go like inside of a building, and then when you're inside of the building, you have to look at the pad while you're playing. I'm like, what the hell? It's like the first. That's like the only game that actually uses the gamepad to what it's supposed to be used for. They use yeah. it create, like creatively, and it works. Like it actually is better on the gamepad than any other controller because you do it quicker. So. Um, did, any, did any of you Wii owners ever play Zombie U? I did. I did. I, I played it for about. Um, six hours, and then I was like, "Yeah, this game is scary as shit. I'm good. I want nothing to do with this." Really? Kind of, kind of the same thing with Outlast because the Zombie U they took the same idea as um, Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Like, if you die, all your stuff is left in a bag, and you have to go to that point and get all your shit back, or else you're left with nothing. So it's like so, day, like Day Z, okay? Yeah, and like if your buddy's online and he dies, he will show up as like a zombie. So you could technically, like, I have a picture of me killing my boss and hitting him in the head with a cricket, and like I <laughs> sent it to him like through 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 a text message. I was like, look, I just killed you like in the game. It was funny as hell, and I took all his stuff and used all of it. <laughs> oh, that's pretty slick. See, I, when when the Wii U first was announced and they showed that game and what you could do with that, you know, the Wii Pad. I was like, okay, this is going to be awesome. But then when it came out and, and I realized that it wasn't as great as I as I don't know why they gave that game such bad reviews. That game that game is actually really solid. It's good. I liked it. I'm not going by specifically the reviews. I mean, it did get pretty pretty. It got banned. Reviews. It got banned. I, yeah, I got, I got a lot of – I mean, I watched a lot of game. I mean, pl- gameplay of the, uh, of the game. And it just mm, – it wasn't reason enough for me to buy the console. But Smash Brothers is coming. It's in the distance, so I will be getting me a Wii U soon. Zelda, then I'll be... When they announced Zelda at E3, watch, watch the Wii U sales. It's going to get crazy. <laughs> I want some new IPs from Nintendo. I want Zelda. I don't care. Zelda or Metroid. Announce either one of them. <laughs> of course, those are going to be those are going to be the sellers, just like Mario Kart is. You know, People go with what they know. But I, I want to see Nintendo take some chances and with their, with their studio and try to create something new, something that's going to draw on a new audience, something that's more centered on people our age. Because yeah. we're not going to get together and fucking play Mario Party, guys. I'm sorry. X, it's not going to happen. X would be cool. The the game X from, uh, like, it's like Xenoblade's new game that's coming out on Wii U. That game looks amazing. Oh, yeah, and uh, Mechs can fly in that game. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Nintendo. <laughs> I had um, something, in case you guys want to move on to the next topic, I had something I was kind of curious what you guys felt about this, is um, that all these developers and stuff, and how like people are leaving companies and stuff for the Sony side, Like, what do you guys think about this? Do you think it's coincidence, or do you really think something's going on bigger than what Sony's announcing? Because there's a lot of like lead people, like for example, 
I think you already talked about this, the person from The Last of Us, she left. Uh, you have uh, now there's even more people from Evolution, which is from Drive Club, which is, you know, was delayed, and now, you know, people are worried. They don't know when it's coming out. And then you have um, a bunch of other people that are just people leaking from Naughty comments. Dogs. And, yeah, and then also Jack Trend. Like, there's a lot of people, if you really look at it, there's a lot of the top people that are leaving these game studios and Sony Company itself. Like, do you think there's more to it? Like, I don't I, know, what, what do you guys think about it? I honestly think that there's too much at one time for it to be a coincidence. I think that these guys are privy to information that we don't have. Like, maybe one yeah. day the, the PlayStation 4 is going to turn into Skynet and jump up and, and destroy us in our homes. I don't know. But, Facebook's uh, buying them. Yeah, well, shit. <laughs> let, me go, let me go get my sledgehammer. I, I don't know. I mean, it could all be coincidence, well-timed coincidence. But for everybody to just all of a sudden, these guys have been working for these companies for years with no issues. And then all of a sudden, within like a three, four-month period of time, everybody says, fuck it, I'm going home. I mean, it's really strange. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were really about to get hatchet there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brian Rabbit? I don't know. You know, I, I I never really thought about it until you brought it up just now. I, I hadn't heard. Yeah, you know, as soon as you started talking about it, it made sense that like it's all like eight or nine people. Yeah, eight yeah. or nine people it's, it's, in the last nine. three weeks. Yeah, yeah, nine people. Nine. Somebody from Sucker Punch left too. Like right after it was launched, they left. The the art director, I believe, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. That's I. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't have an opinion on this. And he's having too much fun with Titanfall. Coincidence. I mean, it's the, the pattern. Humans have pattern recognition, right? It's like kind of one of the things that we do, and we we often see patterns that aren't there. So it, it could be just a coincidence, but it could be that there's something coming down the pike that people are unhappy about. I honestly think Sony is making cuts, like not like not like cuts and fire people, but pay cuts. Like people are gonna have to start taking less money, and and that's the only way to save their company. And I, I think a lot of these top people can't do that. They can't afford that, and that's why I think they're leaving. Because you're seeing them leave to a different company. Like the one guy left to uh, Riot Games, which yeah, is they, they make like them. MMO games, right? Yeah, like for, it's for Blizzard, I believe they yeah. work. The Blizzard, yeah. so like they left for that. Uh, there's like the the one person left for The Last of Us, she left a while ago. She was like the first one, and then people that really didn't think too much of it. And then uh, she didn't she go to uh, Microsoft or no? Didn't they hire? Her? No, that was a uh, that was the chick that wrote uh, Uncharted. Actually, yeah. she wasn't Last of Us. Oh, oh yeah, there's a big controversy oh, about so, that. So she's in Microsoft now. She's in Naughty, but yeah, she's with Microsoft, I believe, right? That yeah. dirty. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you realize that a lot of people that used to be at Sony are at Microsoft right now. Like they leave Sony and they, they go to Microsoft. So Well I think with Jack Tretton what you said probably resonates with me more than anybody else. Uh, he was the face of Sony. He really pumped up us as consumers about the PS4, helped that company make uh, make untold billions, right? And for, for that kind of work, you expect a raise. You expect something substantial. And uh, with Sony making these cuts across the boards, uh, across the board, cutting studios and stuff and letting people go, they probably weren't as uh, apt to give him what he wanted. And he is probably thinking to himself, I'm worth more than this shit. Let me go work, you know, work somewhere else or just, or call it. And I, think I can that sell that shit out of Pepsi, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear him now. We're not going to change any of these ingredients. <laughs> and you can give these. You can give this Pepsi to anybody you want. <laughs> you can share it to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> See, and I was thinking that the reason why uh, the two people left from Naughty Dog is because, like, both of them are Uncharted writers, right? Like, like they both have something to do with Uncharted. One's a writer, and one's a, a, a director or something like that. I thought it had something to do with. Maybe this is the last Uncharted. Maybe Uncharted is done. After this one drops, maybe they're going to kill off Drake or Drake's going to die, and then they won't come out with another one. And that's why uh, they're not going to have them. I love anymore. those games. That, or I think they're changing up <clears throat> Uncharted completely, a whole new design. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what, could they, the people that they have right now, I'm like thinking, like, are they trying to make this Uncharted open world? Because that's what it seemed like. The people that they have on the team, it seemed like they're trying to switch this to a different genre to open world. And if that's uh, the case for Uncharted, then that, that would make sense why all these people that are story-driven and, like, 
you know, people that are used to one thing, it seems like that's why they're leaving. So because oh, that would suck so bad. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm forced to be a little bit more open, but not open, open, man. Yeah, well, it's supposed to relate to pirates and stuff like that. Supposedly, that's what supposedly. the rumor is, right? Well, if well, that's, that's the case, it's more than likely you have open world. What do you say? Well, and that's the thing. If 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 it is open world, that'll change the whole paradigm of what Uncharted always was, being yeah. story driven and things happen at a certain time and they're supposed to happen in a certain chronological order. If it's open world, you can do pretty much anything you want, and it, that is the definition of creative differences, guys. You know, uh, if you got somebody who's written these games and and has been there from the beginning, and then all of a sudden, hey, look, we're changing the entire formula, and there's more of us than there are you. Shit happens, and if they do change that, who knows how it'll be? Because it looks like um, the new Metal Gear, uh, Phantom Pain, will be awesome open world, and that's totally different from the way it has been. And sometimes change is hard, a hard thing to accept. People resist change, you know, all the way until it's changed. So that may be the issue there. If they do decide to change, I mean, look at the PS4's power. They can do so much more with an Uncharted game than they ever have before. If they make it uh, open world, maybe that's what I think her name was Amy Hennick. What's her name? Yeah. yeah. She 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 may have had major issues with that. That's a great point. I never thought about that. Well, the thing is, we'll know for sure that they did something completely different with the game once they announced the name. If the name goes back to Uncharted and then just something else after it, then they change. They're rebooting the game pretty much. If it says Uncharted 4 and then it says something, then maybe yeah. it's going to be the same thing. But if you see that name change, just like like Killzone, Shadowfall, stuff like that, they're going to try to reboot it to something else. So I guess that will be the biggest sign to see what's going to happen when once they announce that name at E3 or something like that. So. Wow. Great point. Man, there's just not another source for those like big bombastic Indiana Jones style adventures. I'd really, I'd miss that. Well, what about Tomb Raider though, Briar Rabbit? That's that's real similar. And that game is awesome too. I mean, that's true. It that's is. True. I, I would say that uh, Uncharted had, I don't know, it hit higher peaks than Tomb Raider did though. Well, when they first, Raider was great. Don't get me wrong. When they, first, when they first shown that scene where he's hanging from the train at E3, I was like, oh, my God, this game's going to be amazing. When, when yeah. they showed 2, when they first showed 2, I was like, wow. The buildings are blowing up. Like, it, Was it 2 where you're in the building, the chopper is, like, blowing up the building while you're trying the to tank, escape the it? The tank was following you, and you're, like, running through alleys and shit. I was like, was wow. Unreal. And then there was another scene where you're, like, jumping. You're in this convoy of moving trucks, and you're in this fight scene, jumping from truck to truck. Like yeah. in these fights, man, it just it felt so so cool, mm. you know. And like I had never seen anything like it. I mean, I think two was a peak. I think it, it was, three was yeah. a little bit of a letdown, but yeah. three was still really fun. Yeah. I think the airplane scene in three, like when you're yeah. trying to climb up that part, that was epic right there. But you ever get that where like your butthole tightens up a little bit? <laughs> 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 like ooh. <laughs> I got that from that scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's really high. Oh, shit. Yeah, say, oh my god. Emodium AD or something like that? Is that what you said? He said emodium. That's funny. There's something oh, to that, that my rabbit. <laughs> have you uh ooh, have you guys tried any of the new uh, PlayStation Plus stuff that's been out for the last couple of weeks? Um I went yesterday to GameStop, my local GameStop, and I got both of my sons um, PlayStation Plus. And uh, they never had it before. Of course, they know what it is. But to have it on their own PS Vitas, their minds are blown. I think my oldest son's mouth hung down this low, and he was looking at the, looking at the games that, that were available for free. He just went crazy downloading. He's playing Unit 13 and Street Fighter. I just love this service, man. I, I took him up there yesterday and Wait, I told him... You have to buy three PlayStation Plus memberships for... You have to buy one for every person in the family. They don't have, like, a family plan of some sort? Well, you got to think about it. It's PlayStation Vitas. Now, for the Vita, you could use just one account. But the thing is, if you go online, you won't be able to play if the other person's online. It's yeah, but, that, like, Microsoft has, like, a family account, so everybody everybody can have their own gamer tag, but you're only paying... You're paying less of a fee than if you were just buying three or four Xbox Live accounts. Things. They don't have anything like that? Didn't they change that from Microsoft? Didn't they change that once Xbox One came? 
Yeah, never I don't know. I, the last time I bought it was still when the 360 was around. Yeah, I thought they changed it as soon as Xbox One came out. Because so that's why you have to have three <laughs> Xbox Live accounts. Yeah, because that's what they were trying to switch the family thing, and then everyone got this off the DRM, and that's why they didn't have any. Jesus Christ! Because with the Xbox 360, you could buy you could buy a family account, which was like twenty five dollars, or I can't remember how much it was a year, but it was. It was not the same as buying three or four accounts. It was much cheaper. Hey, I'm still Brian, working off of that. What? He said, never speak that name in my presence. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> never speak that damn name around me. He said Microsoft five times. Each time my butt clenched. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. DC Gamer, you remind me of something that I need to go over real quick. Did any of you guys, because I got invited to the the beta for the PlayStation. They, PlayStation they, now? PlayStation yeah. now, they send a beta. Anyone else get the beta? Yeah, I did. I want nothing to do with it, though. Really? Why? Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't, don't want to play any of that shit, man. Like, to be honest with you, when, when Last of Us comes out, I'll play that. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that. I don't want to play anything that they have. Like, to be honest with you, when I buy a new console, I play new, like, this gen games, like the new stuff that's coming out, I don't ever want to go back and play that old stuff unless it's super, super retro, like like Super Nintendo, NES, something like that. Other than that, I don't care to play it. What, what do they have? Hold, hold on, hold on. You just said you play your Wii. <laughs> ah, dude <you> said that. <laughs> Wait till Mario Kart comes out. <laughs> Anyone else get the, the beta or no? No, I think I, I would check my email, but I, I don't think I got in. Yeah, I, I got it. I was like, I was so shocked. It's going to start soon. So, like, that means that everyone, you know, could just go check, and, like, that's it. They're just going to let you use it. I mean, there's certain things, once again, non-disclosure act. I can't show it on YouTube. I could talk about it, it says. I just can't show the exact features and stuff like that. Now, now how, do they con- how do they contact you? Now, you had to, to go email. sign up. What was that? You had to go sign up originally, Beastly, like on their website, and then they sent you an email with all this information about Wait, it. Wait, you had to sign up? I don't remember signing I, up. I had, I had, I had to, to sign up, up yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I did sign up then, but I did get it, though. <laughs> I don't know. All I know, I checked my email. I'm like, oh, what? So I clicked on it, and it makes you like go through like all the agreements and stuff, and then that's it. Of course, I looked it up to see if I could say anything or show footage just said no. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But, well, yeah. I I hope that it's lag a, a small enough lag that like playing like an action game is gonna be fun, you know. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I don't expect that we'll be. Maybe I I don't expect that we'll be playing like uh, modern Call Warfare. of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are over. You know, well, you'll never see a first person shooter on there. I don't think I, that will ever happen. I played on live. I had that once. I tried it out for a month when yeah. back in the day on live. So I can compare it. So that's what I'm gonna do to see if it's like that or if it's faster than that. So yeah. you'd hope it's faster than that because that was crap. Yeah, but then again, like I didn't have as good as internet as I do now, so I don't know like what to judge it from. You know what I mean? So like I'm gonna try more to work. Be like, it's lightning quick. We'll be like, yeah. So <laughs> 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 this is the minimum the is five. They said the minimum is five down. Five down. Yeah. Five down. Which is not bad. I'm pretty sure everybody has five down. I think it's five yeah. down or five up. It's five and five. Five up. Yeah. Well, that's where I'd, I'd, I'd have an issue there. Now we can have up. Maybe it's two up. Something like I'm, that. I don't know. I, I, I get 16 down, and I think I'm getting two up. Yeah, that's not uncommon. Yeah. I, I think the internet is actually located at Not Too Nerdy's house. <laughs> <laughs> Coming at you live from the internet. Dude, I have a whole, bunch, internet. a whole bunch of hamsters running, bro. They're all running. <laughs> 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 How much is it to be your ISP? My ISP? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. It's not a core. All right, so I got a new, another question for you. And I'm going to go through the list to everybody. I'll, I'll start with uh, Beastly. Cod made players not here, so I can't embarrass him. <laughs> garbage man. I'm going to be a garbage man for sure. Garbage man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> garbage man. All right, so everybody here... Uh, has a YouTube channel, and everybody has had, like, kind of people, let's say, inspire them to start the channel. And I don't want to turn this into, like, a, everybody patting each other on the back. So what I'm going to say is, if your answer is somebody on this call or something like that, just uh, delete... 
that person and move on to other people. But what really? YouTubers... Really? It's going to be like that? <laughs> Hardcore yeah. shit. <laughs> we don't got no love for nobody in here. <laughs> dog life, bitch. That's because we've talked about like each other's being influences for each other so many times. What I'm really looking for are answers kind of outside of our little circle. What YouTubers did you get motivated to start your own channel? What what guys like kind of said did you see and say, you know, oh man, I'd like to do what that guy's doing or he's showing me something that I want to be doing. And are they still around? Because a lot of the guys, I was thinking about this for myself, and a lot of the guys that I started watching on YouTube don't have channels anymore. So, they work, Beasley, they work, why don't they you... Work, they work at Dairy Mart now. Okay, um, <laughs> the, the, the people who inspired me, I'm not going to name the ones who are here, because they don't want nobody to say their name, but um, <laughs> Woody's Gamer Tag really inspired me, because uh, at that time I was really into Call of Duty Black Ops 2, and I like to see his footage, and I like to hear his commentary, and I like to hear Mail Mondays. I thought it was really interesting. And, and I'm a gamer, so I was it already resonated with me. And then I started to just browse YouTube and find other, other YouTubers, one I won't mention. But uh, I found another guy named Broken Games HD. I'm sure you guys know who he is. Yeah. He's, a very, he's a very articulate, opinionated gamer. And he happens to be black. So I figured, hey, I can do this shit. <laughs> and then I, t I, I told my... Uh, my wife, I said, um, I'm thinking of, you know, considering doing YouTube as something, you know, just for fun, because I, I'm, I'm opinionated. I like video gaming. I think I'm articulate enough to get across to most people, and it, I think it'd be fun. And so um, I gave it a shot. And that's that's my story. On to the next one. Connie, you're next on my list. Yeah, I was trying to think, because, like, a lot of the people that really got me into YouTube, they're nothing to do with video games. Like, a lot of them are British vloggers. We have quite a lot of famous ones over here. There'd be the one like Emma Blackery, Alex Day, just loads of people that have not really much to do with video games. But um, I always knew I'd like to do the sort of game, um, like, the YouTube stuff, because of the community with it, and just, it looks fun. So, yeah. I think watching people like Cryo Cryotic, do you know who I'm on about? No. He's basically Cryotic? Yeah, 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 that's how you say it. Um, he was quite a cool person that made me think, yeah, that looks really good. Uh, is he still around? Yeah, he's got um, a million subscribers at the moment. He does a lot of things with PewDiePie, but I try to stay away from PewDiePie and think more of him. Because he, he's one of those people that's made it big without having a webcam. Like, no one knows what he looks like. Oh, really? He's got a real, like, nice velvet voice, and he's really good. He does a load of creepypasta stuff as well. And, yeah, just... I don't know, I kind of wanted to do vlogs at first, but I didn't really like that, and that's how I moved into gaming, from watching other people. I don't know. <laughs> Great answer, sweetie. Great answer. <laughs> All right, 9 to 5, you're, you're next. Um, a lot to do with my was uh, people like, I don't know if you know who Zaire is, like uh, Next Gen 720 or whatever he goes by, but... Uh, he was he's ill informed on a lot of his information like it's all bunk like or whack or a lot of it's rumored shit uh, which I was I was more like I want to I want to talk about like whether it's a rumor or not I'd rather debunk it or talk shit about Sony for that matter if Sony's doing something that I don't necessarily agree with and I'm a Sony fan I'm going to I'm going to let them know that they're fucking up you know and a lot of people that were littler at the time when I started like intrigued me to do so because at first I thought, oh, if you're not big, if you're not someone known, no one's ever going to be like watching your stuff. You know, like it's going to take you so long to become something. And then, I, for for instance, Beastly Gamer, you were you were like way low on the totem pole when I first watched you. I was like, cool, this dude knows his shit, and he's like low on the totem pole. That's cool. That intrigued me to start up my channel. Was people who don't have like some out of thousands and thousands of followers, you know. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Just get started, yep. Marco? Yep. Well, uh, I probably got inspired but when I was 15 to about three years ago. I used to watch Minnesota Burns, and yep. then I was like, oh, I could probably do that. It's easy. So I went to go buy a capture card. I didn't like the quality, but, yeah, I probably start, it started with him. I liked a lot of his trolling videos. But then the more I go on, I start to detach from that, and I started watching Cena Anders, and I love what he does because what he does is – it's like he, you can join him and his friends playing games. You know, is he? I don't know. He's got that like uh, including. He can mentality. distill fun into like a seven-minute video. He, like he <laughs> takes, he takes like two hours of gameplay and just takes all the fun. Like he, he shows you what's fun about it. 
Exactly, and they, and it's funny because you, if you watch him a lot, you know you know what it's gonna be, and you know his jokes. He's got an inside jokes, and you're all laughing. He's got a pretty good fan base too. So I can say that's pretty much him because I like doing live comps too. Not too nerdy. All right, mine's a little controversial. This guy, a lot of people dislike him. A lot of people don't like the things he says, and you wouldn't think I'll be interested like in watching his content because like I'm not like that. But uh, Dark Side Phil. Now, the reason why I think DSP Gaming is uh, he's very controversial everything he says. He says things that he shouldn't say a lot of times. But uh, the one thing is this guy gets so much hate, like, every day. Like, you should see, like, there's a lot of people that follow him just to hate on him. And for him to keep doing the video and keep doing what he does, and he has a whole system. He does everything his style, and he's been doing it since day one. And, you know, he doesn't have the, you know, he's always been, like, at the 100,000 mark for subscribers. And he has one of the most views, like, or he has one of the most amount of views on YouTube, or no, videos on YouTube, that's what it is, he has a lot of videos on YouTube, and he gets a lot of views, but it's just that a lot of people don't subscribe to him, because he puts up so much content daily, that people don't like to subscribe to him, Yeah. But the fact that he, he says things he shouldn't say, but he's really good at, you know, putting up the content, and like, he's not the best gamer, everyone knows that, but... The, for the stuff that he, he deals with every day, I think it's pretty cool to see him just keep going, no matter how bad people hate on him and stuff like that. You know, he has to watch what he says sometimes, but some of that's entertaining to see because he's like that. Like, you can tell, like, that's him. He's very blunt with everything, and, you know, it's it, you might not like someone like that, but you have to respect that someone at least goes out there and bees himself 24-7. It yeah. might affect him in the end, but, you know, that's him. That's who he is, so... How did you guys start watching gameplay videos? Like, wh- like for me, it was Call of Duty. I wanted to get better at Call of Duty, so I, like, I checked out a couple of Call of Duty like tips and tricks videos, and they had a, basically an immediate effect. So I kept watching them, and then like I kind of fell in love with the personalities. Did you guys have a firm, similar experience, or I think how to? I, I, I did for sure. Yeah. Um, Listening to some of these guys and, 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 and watching their skill on top of that and understanding and, and realizing how personable these people were, you included, Briar Rabbit, uh, it really uh, it, it resonated with me. It, it was an enjoyable experience. It still is. I still love your Call of Duty commentaries, man. It's, it's like the light of my life. But, uh, <laughs> Woody doesn't do them anymore, but no. uh, he used to be one of my favorites. Uh, but there really aren't many other people who I watch. I watch Thunder. You told me about Thunder, and uh, he's the man, son. That dude is sick. And I, and all he talks about is Call of Duty. He has tons of uh, subscribers, and yeah. he has a great personality. He's very likable, and I like likable people. I just checked out D, um, what is it, DSP Gaming you were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Not too nerdy. He has 157,000 subscribers, and uh, obviously he's doing something right, so well, let the hate. Let the, the hate come on. The funny know? thing is, he's been there for, like, years. Like, he's always been around the 120, 150. Like, he stays around that mark for a while. Like, But you should see the amount of views he has on his channel and the amount of uh, content that he puts out. That That's the thing. Like, he in one week, he'll have a 1,000 videos. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. That's why people don't subscribe to him is because... His subbox would just be filled yeah. with it. Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, really? like, this, like he did Dark Souls. He uh, Dark Souls, I think, has 180 parts to it, because he his yeah, videos usually are like 14 minutes long. The long it's 14 or 15. So like he'll do 14, 15 minute, and then he'll do another one that's 14, 15. And if you think about how long these games are to beat, that's a lot of parts. Yeah. He has 26,685 videos. Yeah. That's oh, crazy. Yes. I did subscribe to, and I had to unsubscribe because it was just chock a block of my feed. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, so a lot of people watch him; they just don't subscribe to him for that reason. But people go back and see his film, like his videos. Like a lot of his videos are on YouTube. That's like you just said, twenty six thousand videos on YouTube. Like, that's crazy. There's a lot of videos, man. That's amazing. <laughs> I think that's the like, thing that made me watch YouTube videos was um horror games, because the one thing that I could never play, I can't play horror games to save my life. And the main franchise was Resident Evil. And there's this one guy that he lives in Leeds in England. And he talks like that, and he's like, hello, everyone. And he's like, hello, folks. And I, don't, then, I don't understand. Are you doing an accent right now? Or? <laughs> he doesn't know where I live. But his name is Necroscope, and he's really cool. And he always did um, Resident Evil games, because I could never play them. So that's what sort of got me into watching Let's Plays, to answer your question. Did, did you ever uh, check out Fatal Frame on PS2? 
Cool. That's oh, the game right oh, there, man. Oh my god. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's it's hurdle. What got it's you into it? Hmm? Nine to five. What what got you into watching YouTube videos? I already told mine. I already told mine. Okay. <laughs> He's like, like, but why? Why did you start like, like why did you go to YouTube? Oh, like, oh, originally, um, actually, like, uh, Soulcom and Rainbow Six Vegas, because I was like big into those games, and then seeing people like, as a whole team working together and communicating, like, I dig, I dig that, I dig that more than anything in gaming. Not something that naturally happens online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you, Marco? I have no clue. Uh, part of the same reason as you, just to watch Call of Duty videos. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't play much. I pretty much played Call of Duty. Yeah. Not too and, and, and one thing I gotta say though, Brian Rabbit, watching Call of Duty videos of people who are really good at it, it makes you better. It really, oh, really it does. does. No doubt. I mean, I don't know if it increases your hand-eye coordination and your response time, but when you see somebody go through a, a level of TDM and mow down like everybody, suddenly you feel like a little sprinkle of that godlike power has touched your controller, and then it's almost like you're, you're playing a replay in your mind, and you're just faster and better. And so, like, when I first started watching uh, uh, Black Ops, when I first started watching Black Ops 2 gameplay footage, I wasn't nearly as good as I am now, but over time of watching them, I just became really good. And part of that has to do with you, sir, so I appreciate it. Now, on to Not Too Nerdy. Uh, well, something you have to know about me, it's like my friends always say, like, I'm the dumbest smart person they ever met. So what that <laughs> means is that I always do something like in a game. I'll be playing a game, and I'm flowing. I'm looking pretty good. And then there'll be something that tells me to do, and I'm lost. And I'm just there, and it's right in front of me, but I'm walking around like, what the hell am I supposed to do? And I'm getting all upset, and it's right there. So, like... YouTube used to help me like find what I was supposed to do. Like, oh, I was supposed to do this, and like, I used to look up to see when I'm stuck in a game. Yeah, which happens a lot because I'm always like that idiot that's just there, and like there's an arrow that says do this, do this, and it's blinking and it's flashing, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't get it. I cannot relate enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My favorite YouTuber back in the day, I had I had three guys, really four guys, but uh, X Jaws. You guys familiar with X Jaws? He was a kid. He was like 15 year old, 15 years old. He was still in high school, and he was making videos about how to get better at Call of Duty, and he was absolutely knocking it out of the park. He had, you know, he had like he was getting thousands of views and thousands of subscribers per day, and then he just kind of dropped off the map, and now it looks like he's not coming back, but. It, it was sad because, like, you know, he made he made a ton of money doing this thing he loved, and then he just decided he didn't like to do it anymore. There's another guy, Onslaught, that uh, same kind of thing. I was watching his videos. Uh, he did more kind of like challenges in Call of Duty, and it, his voice was just so much fun to listen to. Like his dialect was, it was kind of this southern urban, uh, but it was just it was entertaining. And uh, I miss him a lot, too, because he was just fun to watch. You know, he's fun to listen to, and he was really good at the game as well. Woody's Gamer Tag was big for me, just, like, the way he the way he brought... The way he kind of, like, analytically talked about the game, I thought was really interesting. And Wings of Redemption, I think that guy's hilarious. I don't care what he's doing, I want to watch every video. See, I think, like, especially the way YouTube's set up now, that, like, you have to first do, like, videos to get people to your channel, and then after you have started to get subscribers, then you have videos that keeps them there by express showing who you are. And yeah. so, like, so those commentary ones that where you just talk about your life and stuff like that, I think that that's important, but, like, that's even more important once you have subscribers because that's what keeps them there. I think that if you do too much of that in the beginning without showing anything else to draw people into your channel, it's going to be a lot harder to get people nowadays. Like before, you would get people to go, but now it's like your channel's hidden from uh, YouTube. So I don't know. That's what I feel like now because YouTube completely changed the way it was. So When I first started, uh, basically everybody was making videos saying, don't even bother starting a, a channel right now. It's impossible. You'll never get any views. You'll never get any subscribers because there's just too much out there. And that was discouraging, but I decided to try it anyway. I had a similar conversation, Beastly, with my fiance Jan. We were at, out at dinner. I was like, 
you know, I've been watching these YouTube videos. I decided I'm going to give it a shot, uh, and I'll do it for a year and see how it goes. And, you know, it went really well. So, you know, I'm going to stick with it. But, like, it, it, it can be discouraging, especially, like, that first, like, six months because it's so hard to get views in that period. See, but for you, like, right away, like, I see, like, you're, like, the headset king. If I have a question about headsets, I'm going to go to your channel to look up the headset. You have every headset, bro. Like, yes, sir, you yes, a headset, sir. he already pre-ordered it or something. Like, I don't know how you do it, who you robbed to get those, but you get them day one and they're there. You know what I mean? So, like, I noticed that. I think other people realize that, too. Like, they're, they're there for you. For They take your opinion seriously when you say something about a headset. So. I think and, and that's just something I'm interested in, so it's easy for me to make the make the videos. You know, it's like I find that if you're ma if you're talking about stuff that you're not that interested in, you can tell. You know, you can tell that it's just kind of words coming out of the mouth. But when somebody's excited about what they're talking about, you can also tell that, and it's a lot more fun to watch. So I, I try and do that. Is I try and talk about stuff that I'm excited about. And your and your run comes are great too. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about her. Yeah, that's really awesome. <laughs> what would you do if, if you uh, had in vitro fertilization and, and, and after 18 months with a baby, <laughs> you found out I wasn't your damn kid? What would you do? What, wait, are they asking for it back? <laughs> <laughs> like, do, is there oh, a return policy? You, you knew that was a black baby. When you took it back, <laughs> what's wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> Should we uh, wrap it up, guys? Is it time to uh, get going? It feels really good to be back, guys. Thanks thanks for all having me. I appreciate it. And, uh, hey, Connie, what time is it there uh, in, the, in the UK right now? It's 1 a.m. You poor thing. Get some uh, sleep. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> I mean, we'll let you go early. Connie, what do, you, what do you got coming up this week? Oh, Jesus. Um, I need... I'm going to upload more of my Deja Vu missions. I'm also trying to um, figure out how to stream Final Fantasy HD, like Final Fantasy X HD, mm -hmm. on my PS3. I'm going to see if I can stream that this week, get that sorted. That's about it, really. Well, let me know what you think about that game. That's, that's a really fun game. I love that game so much. It came with a that's book a as well, and it's amazing. I think that's the only Final Fantasy my wife ever beat. I actually like 12 a little bit more, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, but Final Fantasy VII was always, it'll always be the best. It's in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Nine to five, what are you up to this week? Hold on, I want to show this to BC real quick. If it ain't a sword, I ain't going. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Advent, Advent Children. Advent Children right there, yeah. baby. Oh, okay. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have a Cloud Strife scroll. Oh, that's tight. See, nice. that's awesome. It's like 50 quid that cost me. I was in high school as well. That's a lot of money for me. <laughs> my brother just gave me three scrolls uh, there in my room. That ended up on the wall. One's Evangelion, one's Shung Li, and there's another one with these two Asian, I mean, anime girls that look like hentai a little bit, but it's not hentai hentai. They're not up on the walls yet because I have small children. <laughs> <laughs> Nine to five. What do you What are you up to this week? Uh, I'm gonna finish my fez. Uh, probably. Do, I want to do. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, I want to do a video. Uh, pretty much talking about why people buy games to be cheaters on them. Like all these people buying cheater controllers and mods and all this stuff. I think it's a joke. And then uh, um, I go scuff gaming or scuff controllers all the way. I love those things. That, I don't consider that necessarily cheating, like, fully. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of those controllers, like, they have where you can get prone and shoot at the same time and do all kinds of shit. But, oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to uh, also do a video on uh, Mercenary Kings, obviously. I think I'm going to end up doing a walkthrough of that game. Where do oh, they sell gonna... controllers like that? <laughs> <laughs> just type it in. Just type it in. Not a cheater game, controller. You're going to love my review, then, of uh, a hip dot. It's, hip, it's called Hip Dot Shot. Yeah, not you put it on the screen. They they yeah. send it to, me to review it. So you're gonna love that then. Yeah, yeah you're, cool. that's you're one of those cheating. people. That's <laughs> cheating. Like that's cheating. <laughs> like they they have all kinds of crazy shit. Like a USB hub where you can just download a thing where it's an aim tracker and then you can get automatic <laughs> headshots. Like really, dude? 
<laughs> it's it's crazy. I want to do a video talking shit about those people, though. On Amazon, <laughs> I can get that. I mean, somebody you can, can get that. No, you can get it from their website. You can get it from their website. Just go on any website. They sell them to you. They sell you coding for Battlefield. To, like, there's a dude that shows an actual YouTube video of him playing Battlefield. He loads it on the USB port and plugs it into his PlayStation. He unlocks every single gun, every single dog tag, everything that everyone's like. Like, I have a hundred. I have a. I've just hit rank 100. I have like 220 hours in the game, and I'm still not even close to unlocking everything, which is amazing to me. Like, like, and these people are just, you spend $60 on a game, or your parents spend $60 on a game, you do all these cheats, and you're ruining the ability to play the game for its full potential. Yeah. Well, I, like I, don't, know, I, don't, know you, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm, I can't wait to check out 9 to Five's videos. That's a great topic. I can't wait for it, and I've got to check out your... Metal Gear Solid. Uh, play yeah, go, go, go. I want to see that shit. <laughs> it's like Expendables on crack. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared to play it like that, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Unreal Gamer, what are you doing this week? Well, uh, we're going to start off this week with some Minecraft. I recorded some videos, but I'm really excited for the DLC for Ghosts. It's coming out on the 3rd. So you guys can see some of that. They're going to come out with the Ripper for everybody who didn't have the... Uh, I think everybody knows what the, how the Ripper works already. It's not like this big deal. That guy is uh, awesome. Yeah, it is. And, but I'm really excited for the map where they're going to have like Predator. Did you see that? Sneak yeah, peek? I did. The guy's going to be uh, like barely visible. Mm -hmm. That's going to be cool. I want to get that. I get some of that. And hold, I on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean, Predator? As in Predator? Yeah, like they the added predator. fires for the last DLC, they're going to add the Predator for this DLC. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My channel's going to have it if anybody needs to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, I know where to find it. <laughs> well, and then I got some indie games on Steam. I got this action bundle so you guys can see some indie games and maybe a little Titanfall to top it off. Nice. A little cherry on top. <laughs> <laughs> Nine to five. What are you up to this week? I already went. I went already. I'm You're sorry. Already. Not, not too nerdy. What are you, what are you up to this week? <laughs> sure. Well, <laughs> right now with a video that posted up at a couple of minutes ago. You can always go on my channel and watch it after this if you want. <laughs> that video it just explains another weekly vlog. Explains what I did last week. Also talks about um, like how to get into the game industry. So a lot of people ask me that. Oh, cool. like I give a little secrets how to do that. And then um, next week, you're going to catch my Ground Zeroes review and also my infamous Second Son review. So I actually did like a full like review, edited it out, and did something unique to it, and gave my score for both of them. And um, another episode of Warframe Wednesday, once again. Whatever topics, like debatable, I'll talk about during the video. And that's about it. I like your Sunday night series because you, at the bottom... You put the time code when your actual topic starts. Yeah. So if, if I've already seen all your videos for the week, I can just jump right to the topic. I like that. Yeah, that was actually suggested by one of the users, one of my subscribers. See, because he said, oh, like sometimes it, it takes too long to get to, to it if I already saw it. I'm like, oh, that's a great point. I'll do that from now on. So. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. Anybody else got anything they want us to say before we go? What are you going to do this week? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I don't know. He's like the guy. I'm living, I'm he's like that. Minute, man. Jan just got home from her bachelorette party. I don't know what's going on. I'm oh, shit. This. <laughs> it's all going downhill quick over here, man. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'm going to end it. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you guys next week.